S. Hello, everybody. How we doing? Just kind of getting set up here. Good morning. My own Boontog. Magandan Umaga. My own Aga. Good afternoon. Good evening. I got to remember them all. There's just too many. Too many options. <laughs> How's everyone doing? It's been a while. We'll make sure people get connected and go in here. We're just going to give people a couple of minutes to get connected. If you guys could, though, it looks like I've got audio and camera. Looks like all that's good. If you guys can let me know if everything is working and going well there. You guys hear me okay, see me okay, and then we'll get started. Ooh, I got my coffee. It's super in it. You guys hear me okay? Audio and all that looks good. Check, check, one, two. So check the settings real quick here. Osmo camera, wireless mics. Yeah, it looks like looks like everything's fine. You guys hear me okay? I don't see any comments. Yep, all good. All right, thanks, brother. Appreciate that. So, all right, let's jump into the... I just got a couple of quick announcements. Um, so for those new to the lives, the purpose of the lives really... They're kind of to go into things I can't go into in a comment section, right? Just kind of deep dive into stuff. Sometimes, you know, people ask like four or five different questions in a comment section, and it's just kind of too much to, to use that. So I really like to use the lives to kind of go into this stuff, deep deep dive into stuff. Um, I try to get through all the comments, and actually I've been able to do that in all the lives, but if for some reason they, that can't happen, I'm, I'm more committed to answer your guys' questions thoroughly than to really kind of get through all the comments. I do try to keep an eye on the time. I usually run around 10 to 15 minutes behind um, behind the comments, but just so just, you know, I mean, I've been on the other side of the camera, so I get what it's like to be in a live, wait for your comment to be answered, and then the guy doesn't get to it or skips it or whatever. So I apologize if that happens. Um, uh, so yeah, that's kind of how that works. Uh, let's see here, family channel. It's, it's pretty much a family channel, guys. Um, I like to try to keep stuff drama-free, PG-13. Um, we can go into mature topics as long as there's some taste around it, that kind of deal, right? So I, I do try to keep it that. Um, there's really no set time frame to the lives. I usually, typically I go right around two hours. Um, also in the description, I have got a link to the Carefree Chris community group. And that, guys, has been really phenomenal. I know a lot of people have found that really helpful, the new guys to see Boo. Um, there's usually about 10 or so guys that show up every Monday. And then uh, everyone just kind of, works together, networks together, and answers questions. Uh, so it's a meet and greet. It's meet other people. Those have been really awesome. The kind of the bad news about that is I've got some trips coming up where there won't be any for a while, those meet and greets. But you can find out about that kind of stuff as well as other events, as well as just kind of get linked to a community um, through uh, uh, that link. And it's in the description. I put that link in the video description. All right. So the last announcement I have, really quick, let me just check. Okay, good. The last announcement that I have real quick, and then we'll get to the uh, we'll get to you guys' comments here, is what you can expect coming up, right? Uh, I've got a dating video in the work in the works that actually I've been working on over a year, and I've been really looking at it over the past week or so. I've got, I don't even know, probably two or three page document. Um, but yeah, two or three page document on dating. Um, we're going to go into websites and which ones are good, apps versus websites, also city versus province. And kind of really strategies around both and this is not only from my experiences but i mean really the countless number of guys that i've talked to it's really it's a it's a it's a it's usually one of the topics that we get into as we're meeting together you know as far as how that's going um another trip that i'm going to be doing is the it park trip and i'm going to go ahead and show you real quick kind of what i'm planning to do with that and google maps so in this it park trip that i'm going to do i'm actually if I can find IT Park, <laughs> that might be a fail. <laughs> All right, where are we at here? Hold on. Um, the Starbucks Reserve. Okay, yeah, right here. <laughs> so in this, uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drive around IT Park. I'm going to show you where the mall is at. I'll show you where some condos are at, where people are staying. So uh, that's a video I'll probably shoot maybe later today or maybe tomorrow yet and have it posted up hopefully on Friday. So that's coming in the works. The other videos that are coming that I'm just really super excited about is Chad Foster and I. And if you don't know him, check out his channel. Um, Chad Foster and I, we're going to be doing this massive trip. We're going to go all the way through Lette. 
sorry, I thought I had turned off a lot of those travel stuff, but we're gonna we're gonna take a ferry over to either probably Halongas over to Ormoc, and then we're gonna probably start up in uh, Biliran, up in Naval, and we're gonna we're gonna travel all down through Lete here. There's actually some islands here you can see. I've got them marked here. Just some like look at that. I mean, just you know, just nothing right in the middle of no one's probably ever vlogged it or anything like that. So he and I, I, I don't know how long we're gonna be gone. It could be a could be a couple weeks. It could be a couple months. It could be forever. You know, I really don't know, but we're going to travel all the way down through Lete, down through southern Lete, into Mindanao, and then all the way down through the coast of Mindanao, into Davao City, and then down to General Santos. So, so much coming up, man. I'm just, both of us are so, so excited, and uh, we just can't wait to get that going. So, anyways, that is all the announcements that I have. I know it's quite a bit, but uh, but that's all I got, right? So, a lot of stuff coming up, really excited about you know, all the content and uh, things like that are coming. So with that said, I'm sorry for the now six minutes of announcements, <laughs> but I can be a little bit long-winded uh, for those of you who uh, who don't know. So anyways, here we are. Yes, good morning. <laughs> Finally got past the 5,000 kilometer on the new bike. Dude, that's so cool. Yes, yeah, 6,000 RPM. And glad you got the, uh, got the new seat, right? I'm sure that uh, that makes a big difference. Man, so fun. New bike is is great. I can't wait. I'm hoping to pick up uh, the Himalayan 450 this year. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Hmm. Sunny Bantanga, say hello. Yes. Yes, Maganda Umaga. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha, you, man. I got gotcha. you. All good. I'm, yeah, thanks for that. Appreciate it. So I, I, uh, and uh, I sometimes don't know if uh, if it's all working. And I have a tendency... To run on mute for an extended period of time but volume's a little low okay all right hope it's uh yeah looking at the bar yeah okay might be a little bit maybe turn it up just a hair on my side i got i got a lav mic and a wireless setup here but it looks like it might be good mitch hey mitch how you doing man this guy man i really appreciate you yeah made it back to, made it back to yeah all right good for you brother really appreciate it i mean just Dude, the deodorant is 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 uh, lifesaver, lifesaver. I get, guys, one of the things people ask me, and I and I kind of forget this a lot when they ask me, but one of the things I miss about the United States is freaking stick deodorant, in particular degree stick deodorant. So Mitch actually brought over a care package with a lot of stuff. So really appreciate that. I I actually haven't got the bag uh, down to Mike and Janet yet, but I have it here, and I will get them uh, that bag. So sorry about that. But uh, really appreciate you. Thanks for the sticker too. I appreciate it, and glad you're uh, safely back to Florida. And uh, hope to see you again soon back here. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah. Hey, man. How are you? Yeah. So uh, feel free to jump into those questions. Maybe we didn't. I think I answered most of the questions that you were asking. But uh, feel free to ask anything else that you got going on. So yeah. Glad you made it. Looking forward to the dating video, man. Yes. So it's such. It is, and it is really different depending on where you're at. If you're in the city, if you're in the province, also which websites versus dating apps, or if you're in the United States kind of deal. Um, I, honestly, the, the document that I have rolling now is probably, I'm not even lie, it's probably two good two pages. Um, so I'm really excited about that video, something I've been working on really for a long time. It's also, I feel, one of those videos that I might just redo periodically, kind of like a budget video. It is a hot topic. And I feel as I get more information about the dating environment, and it does change, um, you know, uh, and I've, I've just learned so much really even too over the past three months now that I've been single and dating again. So yeah, I'm actually really excited about that video too. Um, I know it's going to be a big help for a lot of people. Yes, my own Bunta. Yeah, como esta acá? I'm good here, man. Good, Philip. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. You should invite regular. Yeah, you know what, Benny? He, I, he is there now too. He's in Lete, I think, traveling around. I think so. Um, and I think, I know Chad and him are, are, are pretty close and they're talking. So we might, he's, he's pretty much a lone wolf in a lot of ways though. So we might, yeah, I mean, it would be great. It would be great to hook up with him. Yeah. Looking forward to a future ride here in Lausanne. Yeah, man. Yeah, me too. Up in, what was that? Uh, Tagate and, and that island around there. Uh, it looks beautiful. So I do want to spend... Uh, I was thinking about this. I really did not want to leave Makati and in and, and, and that area. I was actually really surprised how much I loved being there. So I'm thinking 
I might be there in November or December and, and spend a month and, and ride around, uh, especially Southern Luzon, your area down there, maybe make it up to Northern, but um, I mean, I am interested in doing some riding in your area. So I'm, who knows, right? The whole, uh, a lot, lot can change between now and then, but I really did enjoy my time there and really great meeting up with you. And, and thanks for giving me a heads up on the community there so, and because made that possible for me to be there. So thank you. Yes. How you doing? I'm, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good. Been a little, I'm a little bit unrested, but uh, just haven't been sleeping well the past two days, but you know, just a lot going on, busy mind and uh, dating again is kind of interferes with some of that stuff, right? I bought about 50 deodorants from the U S <laughs> so what I do, Oh crap. Where'd my camera go? Looks like your camera was unplugged. Hold on guys. Hold on. Sorry. We're going to switch this real quick. Hold on. Settings, camera, FaceTime. Sorry. One second, guys. Looks like my camera dropped. Add the stage. One second, gentlemen. One second. Settings. Oh, wait. Here we go. I think I got it. Start cam. All right. Sorry about that. My uh, pocket camera went out. So, all right, we got it going. Yeah. You bought 50 deodorants for, uh, yeah. So yeah, I bought, so I found two deodorants. There's a roll on and then an aerosol. Um, and I use a combination of both and, and that works fine. So one second, let me just kind of, uh, move this around my Osmo disconnected midstream. So switch to the, uh, laptop cam. All right. Thank goodness I was an IT guy, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So really, uh, the degree I like the degree deodorant from the United States, and that's what I use here. It works well. I'm a little bit worried about it potentially melting um, when I'm on the road, but yeah, yeah. I stocked up on Red Guard. Yeah, yeah. Life after fifty. Hey, Chris. Hello from South Florida. Glad you're moving forward after the breakup. Yeah, no worries. Sometimes people enter your life for a reason. Yeah, enjoy the ride. Keep up the good video of motorcycle cam is cool. Yeah, man, I'm really excited about the moto vlogging and that setup there. Um, the GPS stats, uh, the camera, like I said, I'm going to do a moto tour of IT Park. I'm going to show you guys, you know, while I'm riding through IT Park, I'm going to point out, like, here's the mall, here's the Suba Mikado, here's, here's some condos, show you the, the park place. So I'll do a nice riding tour of that whole IT Park area. Matter of fact, I'll show you on the map kind of too real quick uh where are we at oh yeah maps um i'm really i think this will be a really good video uh let's see hold on oh i guess we're not in uh yeah they just that whole it park neighborhood yes and then we'll just kind of come down this main street here and just kind of tour right down through here um over by yeah here's the avita towers i'll show you where that's at as well as that suva mikado we'll come down through here and then I'll go around the mall. There's some couple condos over here as well that I think would be really cool. So yeah, I'm actually really kind of uh, uh, excited about doing that that moto vlogging aspect of the Philippines and just kind of show you that perspective of the roads and the streets and kind of where things are. IT Park is really different in the sense that it's more of an outdoor experience than the business park, which is more about the Ayala Mall and an indoor experience. So um, I'm excited about showing you guys that and yeah. Yeah, the dating stuff, whatever, man, it happens. It, it's, it's really interesting now, though, to see some different perspective on that um, as I'm back into dating and meeting other people. And, man, it's just, guys, it, it is incredible out here. Now we have to be careful, right, and, you know, make some mistakes around that and, and, and um, kind of watch ourselves uh, as far as, especially when we first get here, I feel we're, we're the most vulnerable to uh, just kind of bad dating environments. But, you know, yeah, man. No, things are really, things are really, really good. And just I'm blown away. I'm blown away by the generosity of the Filipinas for the, you know, just both the men and the women. And and now that I'm meeting women too, who are just, just absolutely incredible. Um, just really, man, just so, so excited, right? Yes, we must have when motorcycling in the Philippines. What's a must have when motorcycling in the Philippines? Okay. Right. So, I mean, a good helmet, a good helmet can be hard to find. The good thing about the riding here, uh, Philip, is it's slower speeds, right? So you're talking 
you know, hardly, at least here now in Luzon, they have interstates and highways, you can get up a little bit faster, right? And I actually did see some leader bikes up there when I was in uh, Makati and BGC, that whole area, there are big bikes up there. Here, you wouldn't want that kind of big, bigger bike. And I think that really only applies to Luzon and the Manila area, would you want a bigger bike? The rest of the Philippines, you, you, you want, I mean, honestly, a Honda ADV 160 is probably the most practical machine for everything else out of side Luzon, right? Um, but yeah, so as far as gear, a good helmet would be good. Some good rain gear, some good, really good rain gear that's breathable. breathable. Um, that would be kind of key. Yeah, that's all that really comes to mind. I honestly, as you've kind of seen in my videos, I don't really ride. Like in the United States, I was, what do you call it, at GAD or whatever. I wear all the gear all the time. So I had helmet, gloves, shoes. I had everything. I'd climb, climb, uh, what do you call it, Marrakesh? Jacket and pants. I actually brought those with me, but here the speeds are so slow and stuff like that. I actually, I don't really ride in much riding gear other than a good helmet. Um, so yeah, yeah, great question, Phil. Have you heard the saying, I have duck before? No, I actually haven't. Yeah, yeah, no, I have not heard that before, Dean. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, freaking camera. Good thing, right? Just take a second. <laughs> as as time gets closer and closer, moving to the Philippines later this year. Yeah, I bet, man. I bet. I remember. I remember. So I made the decision in November. I can't what year, whatever heck year that was now. But I made the decision really just, I gave my notice, all that stuff, November 1st. And I was moved December. Got my boxes shipped and packed and I mean, obviously, it was something I was thinking about for quite a while. I did a scouting trip. Before. I did a scouting trip in like August. Um, what was that? What year? Whatever hell year that was. 2020? 2020. I'm sorry. Yeah, 2022. But so, yeah, it's exciting, man. Exciting and nervous. And uh, yeah, good for you. Yeah, good times. Good times. When the camera went down, I was going to say, turn it off and turn it on again. Yeah, I don't know. That's the first time I've actually, I don't really. So I have the DJI Pocket Osmo uh, do lolly here. And uh, really dig this camera for low light and night. I use it a lot. And I've done some live streams with it before. And it's kind of the first time that I had it disconnect on me. So, yeah, I don't know. But thankfully, I just, I think the quality is a little bit better with that camera. And I really wanted to test with it. But whatever. I just use a laptop cam. So it all worked out. I had to switch it really quick. And then, but anyways, it's all good. Good morning from Angela City. Yes, man. Hey, Randy. Thanks for being here, brother. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate it. Hope all is good up there. Uh, Rabute moved from... I did see that. I did see that. Yeah, good for her. What a sweet girl, too. I, I'm a fan of her work. I've always been kind of a fan of her. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I can see it. Like, look, I really loved BGC and Makati. I freaking loved it, man. Makati in particular, it had a, just a really cool kind of artsy vibe for me. I loved it. I did not want to leave. I had such a good time. Shout out to you, Mark and Matt, and 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 Tim, and you know Richard, and everyone out there that I met. I had such a good time, man. I had so much fun. I did not want to leave, but I wouldn't want to live there, right? Like, you know, I think if you're if you want, like, I didn't feel like I was in the Philippines. It felt like I was in a Western city, you know. But it was nice. I loved it. You know, restaurants, all that. You know, modern, really modern living. Um, I really did like it. I, I I would love to spend go back and spend a good month there. Yeah, it was a good time. But, you know, I would miss, I would miss, you know, kind of the, the more rural areas, the beach areas and stuff like that. Hey, Big C, looking good. I honestly miss the weekly lives. Yeah, no worries, man. I was also pissed at the number of thumbs up. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> I, 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 Brother X, I, I love the lives too. I really do. And I, I, I plan on doing them. You know, it's just been two weeks. Um, I, I'm a little, I don't know as far as my availability to do lives when I'm on, kind of on the road and traveling, but. Let's, let's keep rolling with it. We'll figure it out as we go, right? That's kind of a lot of my mentality uh, here and life in general. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm, I love the lives too. I, I am a big fan of, of this type of interaction. And it just does. It allows us to really kind of go into stuff deep and answer questions. And, you know, I'm an open book. I really am. I mean, you, you guys have been around for a while. You know that. So, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm a fan too. Uh, love yourself first, brother. And I was all you'll be spending. Yeah, man. Yep. No, it's good. I mean, I, I, I didn't move here for relationships, right? That wasn't a priority of mine. If you watch my hate culture to happiness video, I kind of talked a little bit about that, right? Where I really just moved here to have a simpler life, a simpler existence, to surround myself with friendly, happy people. And that's still true today. Um, it, it, it is why I'm here. I mean, 
the dating part, I'm not going to lie. It is absolutely incredible. And, um, and yeah, man, this is, I'm just blown away. Um, but it, 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 it is not while I moved here. Yeah. The regular guy just finished up a collaboration with a promise girl and I said, officially, okay, cool. And like you said, men and the women seemed like such great people. Yeah, man, absolutely. Yeah. Really great people. Um, phenomenal. I, I, there's a saying that I think is very true. Like you get what you give. So I think they're great to a certain extent where, um, things can change given your behavior towards them. Right. So I think that's just something we have to watch for is we get what we give. Right. Yeah. That's, I pronounce a he. It's a very old school thing. They said in Yorkshire. All right. North of England. Right. It's knock, knock. Who's there, bot? <laughs> you can get nice beach areas down past my place in Batangas. Yeah. I've heard. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I've heard some, there's some good uh, areas there. We got some time here, right? Let's, let's, let's take a look at Bentangas. You know what? There it is. Oh yeah. All right. Was I on the wrong map? Well, let's look at this one second. One second. Saved. Let's hide that. All right, good. All right. Cause this is the one. Yes. Okay, good. Sorry. I just wanted to, cause it's hard to see with all my stuff on there. Let's go over to Bentangas. Where are we? There we are. Yes. So I've heard this is a great area and a lot of people uh, like to be down here, especially from Manila. Uh, the Bacangas Bay. Yeah. I, I want to check that out. That'd be a great ride too, right? From uh, Manila. How far is that? Directions. Let's just say Manila. From Manila. All right. Yeah, that's rideable, right? Even from there, so probably from you, you're a little bit south. You know, you're talking three hour ride. That'd be beautiful too, right? Round down through this lake. You probably want to go this way though, right? Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah, no, I, I'd be down for that for sure. That looks like an incredible. Uh, I, I, I'm down riding Luzon, especially you know northern Luzon up in the um, up in the uh, you know the Baguio up there. That'd be cool too. I did bring some warmer some warmer clothes, but, uh, but yeah, no, that looks great. I'd love to check that out. What's the driver's license deal there? Do you need a local license? Is the international driver's license a real thing? So my understanding is your driver's license will is valid for 90 days. And after that, you need to get a Philippines driver's license to legally drive on the road. I did not get one until I think it was around six months. So there's a little bit of a timing deal, right? Where you have to get your ACR card. There's a lot of things that kind of go into that. So I think it is really challenging to get your driver's license at 90 days. But I want to tell you this, gentlemen, if you're driving, I don't know about other regions, but if you're driving in the Cebu City region, it is a ticket happy region. So just be legal, right? Um, regular guy got pulled over and almost had a bunch of problems. I don't know if you talked about that or not. Um, I know Derek from Q Adventure, shout out to you, Derek, brother, uh, helped him out. I've gotten pulled over three different times. All my buddies who are driving here have gotten pulled over. So really, you want to make sure that you're you're driving legally. Uh, but yes, so there is such a so basically once after after you get your ACR card, which takes whatever a couple months, you can then go down to the uh, what is it LTO office here in here in Cebu City. The SMC side is probably the there's there's, there's I think another one in Mandawi City, but. Um, the SMC side is a good place to go. They have the medical exam there. You can get your medical exam. You need copies of all your visa receipts. You need a copy of your passport. You need a copy of your driver's license. If you don't have a motorcycle endorsement on your on your driver's license currently, you'll you'll have to do some you'll have to do some motorcycle training there. Um, and that's gonna that's gonna vary depending on what office you go to. So it's best if you're in the United States and you plan on riding a scooter here in the Philippines. Go get your motorcycle endorsement, right? Just go do it. It's cake. It's easy. It takes you a weekend and you're done. Um, I, I did it myself and it's good. It gives you, you know, good training. Although, you know, whatever, some of that may, may or may not kind of apply here. But anyways, get a, have a driver's license with a motorcycle endorsement, have all your paperwork, get your medical from, get your medical check. I actually also had a letter of residency. I don't know if that's required. But I had that. So basically, it's a letter from my condo agency. Yes, says Chris, he lives here. 
Uh, so yeah, there is such thing as an international driver's license. It, I, my understanding of that is it's needed when your current license isn't in English. Um, so that's when you could use that. Now, does an in international driver's license replace a the need to get a Philippines driver's license? I don't know that, right? I do not know that. But for me, I went ahead and got the Philippines driver's license. Um, I have it now for a while. When I got it, um, they were out of the plastic. So I actually just have a paper copy. But yeah, yeah. So that's kind of the information that I have regarding the Philippines driver's license. My worries about living in the Philippines is transferring money, credit cards and renewals, receiving the new card through the mail. Have you ever made a video on this particular subject? I have not made a video on that particular subject, um, but this is what we can talk about right here, right? So the best thing you could do is before you come out here, refresh all that stuff. Get your driver's license done, get your passport done, get anything with an expiration date handled, right? So that, that, that way, for the most part, you've got four or five years before any of that stuff needs to be renewed. And of course, passport, you got 10, driver's license, whatever, depending on the state, right? It's going to vary. Uh, but get all that stuff removed before you come here. That way, it's, it's not an issue for a while. And then I, my understanding is you can get some credit cards, depending on your bank and all that, they'll ship it over from like DHL or whatever, they'll ship it over, but not all. So that is gonna vary depending on bank to bank. Um, yeah, that can be a little bit of a challenge. So what you could do is you refresh all that stuff before you come and then, you know, whatever, most of us go back to the States every couple of years or so, you can spend a month or, or yeah. So you go back to the States, you could refresh all that stuff when you go back and then boom, you're good for another several years, right? So it is a concern. Some credit card companies will ship overseas, some won't, it just kind of depends. So, but definitely if you refresh everything before you come out, you've solved that problem, right? Yeah, great question. Yeah, a good ride? Yeah, no, I, that sounds great. Down to Bentangas, three three hours or so. Looks awesome, I, I'm down. Just did it yesterday, right? Yeah, new bike, man. Oh, yeah, new bikes are fun. New bike day is fun. It's uh, the registration, the registration though is such a bear. It sounds like it's probably better there. Yeah, it is better there for you. Because here, dude, here you can't ride. I bought the bike, I bring it home, and you can't ride it. It sits there. Mine sat there for almost three months before I was able to legally ride it. And in this city, dude, that's the last thing you want to do. I, two guys almost got their bikes impounded. Three guys almost got regular guy being one of them, right? So regular guy, um, my buddy Brad and Britt almost had their bikes impounded because of, uh, you know, whatever, registration issues or whatever. So Cebu City is a very very ticket pullover kind of uh, area. I don't know about the rest of the Philippines, but I can definitely say Cebu City is uh, is, is really strict. Was on Rabuti's lunch room yesterday, trying to explain what she and, oh, on her, <laughs> all right. One thing I can say that she rides a scooter really well. All right, yeah, 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 good for her. I'm glad she's down there. I have seen a little bit of that. What an adjustment from BGC to from Sikihor, but good for her, right? I, I get it. And I think for most of us that are coming to the Philippines, I mean, we would probably do the same. And that's what, so that's what's kind of great about Cebu City is that you can do that. You can have Cebu City be your base and you can easily travel. Oh, I'm just going to move that a little bit. You could easily travel to other, uh, other islands like that. You're centrally located. You can hop on a ferry like Sikihor, right? It's so easy for me to get to. It's, um, you know, I could either drop my, drive my bike down to Dumaguete and get a ferry over. Or I can hop over from Bohol. You're just, you really, you know what? Let's, let's pull it up on a map. Let's pull it up on a map. Um, add the stage. There we go. Um, so yeah, so this is what I love about this particular region is you can get everywhere. You know, look at, you know, so when you look at the Philippines, here's another thing that I like to tell people. You see this area here? I mean, this area is a, is a space that, that spans like from Detroit to Daytona. You know, it's just whatever, a couple thousand miles, I believe it is. I mean, it's just huge, right? Most people don't really realize that, but just super long. Granted, there's not a lot of landmass, but uh, but it is a long stretch of islands. So when you look at Cebu City, kind of here we are, right in the middle. You're sheltered from a lot of the, the, the typhoons that come in, right? They come in here and hit Lete and Samar and then ride right up. So you, you really are in a great location. And if you do, you want to, you got an international airport here. So if you want to hop on an airplane and go to whatever, El Nido or Palawan, you can do that easily. If you want to go up to Manila, like I did, it's an hour and a half. Iloilo, less than a 45-minute ride. 
right? Ilo Ilo, um, or go down to Davao, whatever. I'm sure that's probably an, an hour or so. So, or you can hop on a ferry and do boats, right? You can go over to Bohol. It's just, it really is easy. And then down to Sikihor. So here's where Sikihor is at. And this is where she is down, you know, cruising around this island. I have not been out to Sikihor yet. I really can't wait to get down there. It is on my list of stuff to do for sure. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm a fan of her and, uh, and, and what she's up to there. I'm excited for her. Hope it, uh, hope it works out for her there on CQ War. Is Yamaha X-Max 300 too big scooter? For no, I think it's fine. Honestly, if you're going to be in BGC and Makani, you might want to look at, I, can't, I can never remember the restriction. Somebody told me before, if somebody remembers it, maybe drop it in the chat. Is it 350 CC or 450 or 400? I can't, there's, so there's a CC requirement to be on the interstate. Um, so if you're going to be in probably that area, you might want to look at a little bit bigger CC bike. Uh, but also, too, it's a walkable city. I mean, when you're in Makani and BGC, the last thing I did was I, I walked everywhere or, or jump in a grab. Um, I don't personally for me, I don't really like driving in the city on a motor scooter. It, it just it's so different the riding here. And, you know, plus, too, I got in a kind of a bad accident in the city. So I'm just hesitant. I, I prefer more of a country riding, more open roads and beautiful scenery. But. But you could get that scooter, but in that region, you want to be mindful of the CC requirement that's there for inter interstates and just the fact that city riding is kind of a little bit of a, of a yuck, but that, that's just me. Uh, Benny, you know anything about who's involved with getting motorcycle license there? I was thinking about getting mine before I moved, but it was, okay, yeah, so you want to get your motor endorsement? Yeah, you can, I think it is right around that, Benny. It's usually a weekend class. Um, you know, I can't remember the name of the company that does them. There's probably all throughout. There was one in Colorado. Crap. Anyways, I would get it. I would get it there. Get your motorcycle endorsement there in the States, and then it's done. It's super easy to do. It takes a weekend, and then you do a, you do a driving and a written exam, and then you're done. Even if you don't ride in the United States at all, you just ride a scooter here, um, then you've got it. It's one less thing to do here. I mean, you could do it here, um, and maybe they won't even do a written or driving test here, but... You know, something something you wouldn't have to worry about. Yeah, great question, Benny. Yes, good morning. Yes, my own Buntag, Magandanu Maga, my own Aga, and for those in Elongo, a paper driver's license. Yes, imagine that in the States. I know, right? They were out of the plastic. So I have a uh, I have a plastic driver's license. Yes. Yes. <laughs> This guy is down in Ila Ila. I didn't even know he's gone. I messaged him yesterday. I'm like, dude, where the hell are you? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yes, my own Aga. Good for you. Hope you're good there. That was crazy, man. <laughs> you can prepay your property. You can prepay your property tax. 97420 Empire. I'm not sure, man. Yeah, I don't have property out here. I mean, I did. I did help out with the, the owner of this condo and paid taxes, but uh, um, yeah, so I think you, if you're, yeah, you could prepay property tax here um, as I just did that a couple weeks ago for the, the current owner. But yeah, I think that's an option to, in Cebu city. You go down to the, whatever the tax office and do stuff there. I got an international driver's license at AA for the Philippines. I think it was about 20 bucks and it was good for a year. All right, cool. You can specifically state the date for one year period. All right, great. I'm not sure. I don't have my wallet on me. I'm not sure how long my driver's license is good for in the Philippines. I think five years or so. Is it worth bringing cash when first getting there? I think I think you can bring up to 10. Yeah, you can bring more than that. Anything more than 10, though, you have to uh, claim. Um, so you'd have some more paperwork. I mean, that, that's kind of a lot of cash to carry. What I would do, so I, when I came, I had 5,000 US on me. Um, and, but what some guys are doing, you can actually go to your bank and get some pesos ahead of time, which honestly, if you can get even just $50 in pesos, it just, it helps you out for the cab and that kind of deal and getting around the first couple of days. Um, but yeah, man, yeah, I, I wouldn't, you're not going to need 10,000. I mean, I can't think of a reason why you would want, want to carry or need to carry that much cash um, to, to come here. Um, you know, I had, like I said, I had 5,000 and almost that is, is, is a lot, but you know, whatever. Yeah. You can, you can, you can bring, you can bring a lot, but no, anything more than 10,000, you have to fill out paperwork. You can bring more than 10. You just have to, you have to fill out. 
It is, is it C2? I'm not sure what that means, brother. It is a little smaller than I'm looking at, okay? So no need for my Harley time to sell. Dude, you're right, man. Flying to Cebu in April. Good to know I made the right choice. I love it out here, Vernon. I love. Now, look, I also love BGC and Makati. I love that. And it surprised me how much I liked it. So awesome. I freaking love I had such a good time. It's probably because the company I was hanging out with. Shout out to you, Tin, and Mark, and Matt, and, and Richard. I was just, just great people, man. I met really great people. I, a lot of, like, instantly connected with friends. I mean, this guy, Richard, I could see riding with him all throughout Southern Luzon. You know, Mark and Matt, really cool guys up in Makati. Um, and then, of course, Tim, really good friend. We hung out for a couple of days. I mean, just, you know, the people had a lot to do with it. But I also really enjoyed, you know, just the modern vibe. And, you know, there was a there was a Shake Shack there. <laughs> you know, just really cool walking around the city. But, yes, no need for the Harley. Honestly, Vernon, I feel like the 500cc range, if you want a bigger bike with a Honda NX, the brand new Honda NX 500, that looks like a great machine. The Himalayan 450, man, that looks like like probably the best Philippines machine for, for guys who want a full-on motorcycle. You've got an ADV bike, so you can strap some bags on it. You've got a little bit of a suspension because, look, the roads are – most everything is paved, but some of it you've got some you know uneven pavement. You've got potholes and stuff like that. So you got to – the scooter suspension, I feel, doesn't really do, good, do that good of a job with that. The ADV does have a little bit better suspension, the Honda ADV 160, but – you know, nothing like an actual ADV motorcycle. So I do feel there's a couple bikes that are really just kind of perfect for this region. Um, so, yeah, 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 man. But as far as Cebu City, I'm a big fan. There's a lot of areas, though. Elo Elo looks great. Man, it just it really depends on what you're looking for. I, I tell guys, look, I tell guys, look, let's go back to the map, right? Let's go back to the map. Add the stage. Oh, I tell guys this. Like, look, if you're into city living, like if you like a city, come to Cebu City. If you're more of a country guy, you know, start off in Dumaguete, right? And then what you could do in Dumaguete is you can, you know, you can go down to the uh, the Why Not or the Ground Zero and you can make your expat connections. I know most of you are like, ah, I just want to get away from foreigners. I moved here to kind of be whatever. But having a couple of foreigner friends, man, gentlemen, I'm telling you, is key. So if you're more of a country guy, Dumaguete is your deal. But if you're more of a city guy, I would say Cebu City. If you're a really big city guy, like you need – modern amenities and all that stuff, you know, Makati, BGC, right? Um, Cebu City is kind of that in-between. I think then then once you're here, you branch out. Maybe you go over to Iloilo. Maybe you go to Bacolet. You know, maybe you check out Dumaguete. You go down to Sigio or Bohol. Bohol, I mean, that's, I think, where a lot of people end up, right? Rike is down there. Uh, Jonathan, I think, well, actually, I think he just left, but Jonathan was in Bohol. So Cebu, Cebu City really gives you great access to a lot of regions, right? So... Yeah, cool. Yeah, but definitely get rid of the Harley. All right, where are we at at time? All right, 829, 838. Okay, cool. Cebu City is the traffic and force capital of the Philippines. Yep. Yeah, 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 man. Mitch, I think you're right, brother. I think you're right. And I've it's something I did not hear about before I moved to this region. Like, nobody was really talking about that. But you get pulled over. And it's really key when you're talking about a new bike. Um, because the registration with the LTO hasn't really gone through and it takes a couple months. I mean, you're talking about bikes getting impounded and, and they're just gone, right? When you, well, you can get them back, but, you know, it's time and money to do all that stuff. So, yeah, a big, big deal, big deal riding around here. And I, for me personally, I feel Cebu City is a very walkable city. Well, let's go back to the map again. I feel Cebu City is a very walkable city. It's a small town, you guys. It really is, right? just tiny. It, it, it's not a big area and you can walk a lot of this stuff. I would walk from Isla Mall over to both Isla Malls when I first got here. It was really easy. I mean, now granted, you wouldn't like walk over to SMC side in the El Corso area, right? But you, it is very walkable city, I feel. And then you can grab a motor taxi. Um, you can grab a regular taxi, whatever. You can get grabbed. It's, you don't really need transportation. If anything, I think transportation living here is more of a hindrance than it is a help. Now, that's not the case with, like, if you're down in Dumaguete or if you're in other areas, you actually really need transportation. But with Cebu City, probably even Makati with BGC, um, some of these bigger cities, um, you, you don't really want or need transportation. Actually, I would probably say probably 
Cebu City and Makani and BGC are probably the cities where you don't need it or want it. Probably maybe everywhere else you'd want you'd want tra- your own transportation. But like in Iloilo, that own transportation that could be a a bicycle, right? It doesn't necessarily need to be a car, you know. But they've got all kinds of bike paths through that town. So yeah, yeah, great question, good stuff. Yep. I had a 2005 Yamaha Roadstar Warrior 1700 motorcycle that I recently sold. Do you ever see any big bikes there in the Philippines? Mostly you see 125, 400s. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, there are some big bikes. Like, like when I was in BGC, Makati, I saw some leader bikes. I saw some bigger machines. And that's because they have interstates and stuff like that you could ride on. Here in Cebu City and everywhere else that I've been in the Philippines, Lete, uh, all those regions, right? Negros. They're just, they're too big. They're too big. And, you know, I, I say this all the time, right? It's like a Ferrari on a go-kart track. It's just, you, you, when you're riding between 25 and 40 miles an hour most of your time, it's not so much fun to have like, you know, a freaking leader bike that you're sitting on or a big bike. Now, do guys have them? Are there Harleys? Yeah, man, there are. Are there riding groups? Absolutely. You know, Harley in particular, though, you're going to spend twice as much here as you would in the States, you know, and they're already kind of expenses, expensive. So they do exist. They're just not the most practical uh, bikes for the for the riding that you're going to do here. So that's why you see exactly like you're seeing there between the 125 and 400 in this region of the Philippines. Um, just, they, they just you're going to be in and out of traffic. You, you want light, agile. Um, yeah, those are kind of really the the ideal machines for the riding here in this particular area. I would say probably the majority of the Philippines is, is, is that. That's why everyone is on a scooter, right? Because it, it just makes sense. Hex, my mom passed away. Oh, dude, I'm sorry, brother. She's been ner- ner- nursing facility in bad shape. There's no way. Yeah, man. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. You're able to travel now? Okay. Uh, between now and June, what date would you recommend? That's a great question, Hex. And really, brother, I'm sorry for your mom. That's rough. Um, but yeah. Uh, so there is a week I would recommend not travel. There's a couple weeks you don't want to come here to the Philippines, and one of them is Holy Week, and that's coming up. It's the end of March. Um, and I say that because the beaches are absolutely mobbed and packed. You're going to have a hard time getting reservations. Everyone basically goes out of the city and to the beach. So um, it's just, for one, the cities are vacant, so there's nothing going on. Things are closed. And then, two, the beaches are absolutely mobbed. So I would avoid Holy Week. And this week is it's the end of March, and that the Holy Week is like whatever Easter Sunday, you know that that time frame, right? So that's the time not to come. There's another week in November. Is it around elections? There's another week. I can't remember exactly when. That's another time I would probably not come to the Philippines because the same kind of deal. Everyone kind of goes home, um, and synagogue can also be a rough time to come in Cebu City. And that's the third Sunday of January. I mean, it's a great time to come, but it's also not. It's a really cool event, amazing, but the sound, the count is just nuts, right? So many people, like three, oh, three and a half million people in the, the Cebu City region, and that freaking there's like two more million people that come here. It's just crazy, uh, but yeah, uh, best time to come outside of that, brother. Outside of coming up the in, last week of March, anytime. I mean, anytime. We're entering right now into what's called summer. So March, April, May is their summer here. And it's a little, it's a drier, warmer time. So, um, so yeah, but really any time. If you're going to come in the Burr months, September, October, November, December, that is the time of year where you really want to watch for typhoons. So just keep an eye out to the, you know what, anytime I talk about a map, I want to bring up the map because I know a lot of people really love that. Um, but so anytime you're coming in the Burr months, you want to watch storms brewing off in this region right here. And typically what they'll do, though, is they'll come in here and ride north. So depending on where you're going in the Philippines, even the Burma, you'll be fine. Cebu City is, is, is typically avoids a lot of those bigger storms. So although they had Odette rip through here, right? So they're not immune to it. But typically most of those go through here. So the Burma, I mean, the Burma, you're fine anywhere. You just you want to be a little more active in your watching. Um, but you, and then my plan, if there's a big storm, is to head down to Davao City. So, Yeah. Let's remove that. But yeah, any time of year, any time of year is fine. I kind of, I, I kind of like the rainy season, the burn months, just because there's a little more cloud cover and it's not as hot. So I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I'm coming into my second summer here, and uh, but so far the weather really has been a non-factor. But yeah, yeah. Again, sorry about your mom, brother. That, that's rough. I lost my mom 
what over 15 years ago now. So, and I get, I get it. We were, we were super close. I was definitely a mama's boy. <laughs> Mabuhai, yes. What's the weather like today in paradise? Sunny, muggy, another fine day in the Philippines. With, with another day to find me a Filipina wife. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we got 81 degrees. It is nice, man. It's summer, so it's warm. Yesterday, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was blue, blue, blue sky. So, yeah, it's been nice, man. Yeah, yeah. Good to see you, brother. Hope you're good. Uh, Social Security for us older guys thinking about moving to the Philippines. I heard that it's best to get that done stateside, if at all possible. It could be a real nightmare to get it done there. Okay, Brian. Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of in general, right? Whatever you can get handled and done there before coming over, obviously try to do. I think I do know guys recently, though, that had it done here. Um, I don't, like, I'm just kind of vaguely remember. I don't remember any issues with that, but but you're right on. I think, like I said, I think that goes with just anything. Handle everything and anything before you come out um, um, and then see. But I don't know. I, I guess it is interesting. Like, would you want to wait? Yeah, I don't know. That's great. I don't know any. I don't know anyone who's kind of gone through that process. There was one person that I kind of remember briefly, but I don't remember if it was easy or hard. I don't really remember the gist of it. But yeah, handle everything you can before coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks, brother. I forget. 400 cc minimum on the freeways, but bikes like the 390 Dukes. Okay, yeah. All right, sweet. All right, good to know. Yep, good to know. There is also a cc, uh, not really a requirement on the Celex Bridge here on the south, but they have another lane too that you could ride on. But here, there's yeah, this region there's not just just where these guys are at up in uh, Luzon, the Manila area. There's some requirements. Yeah, appreciate that, brother. I'll probably rent a scooter. From Derek, yeah, Q Adventures. Yeah, shout out to Derek Q Adventures. Man, guys, just blown away by this vlogging community and Paul, old dog, and, you know, just guys reaching out and just Derek, you know, quick story about this, right? So Derek from Q Adventures, and if you don't watch, follow his channel, great guy, um, him and his girl. But Derek was down in Dumaguete doing some stuff, and him and Paul were hanging out. And uh, Paul reached out to me in mid-January or so. He's like, hey, man, are you doing? I heard you kind of had a little bit of a rough breakup. So just, man, that's just so cool, right, that these guys reach out. And then Derek was down there. And he says, hey, when you're up in Cebu, you know, take Chris out to lunch or whatever and check in on it. I just, and then so Derek reached out. And I'm just blown away by that. Just the, the guys, right, the guy friends that are here. It's just, gosh, it's so awesome, man. I haven't had this type of friends and stuff like that probably since elementary school. But anyway, shout out to you, Derek. Shout out to you, Paul. Just, just good guys, right, good guys. But all right, I'll probably rent a scooter from Derek at Q Adventures and two or different islands. He allows you to take them anywhere in the Philippines. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Stand-up guy. He, he's got, I think, 30 or so different scooters in his fleet. He's uh, expanding and growing that all the time. I just talked to him, like I said, a week or so ago, um, and he's getting ready to buy a couple more scooters. So, yeah, absolutely. If you're looking to rent scooters in the Cebu City area, Derek is, is, is a good guy to go to. Yeah. Just how thick is the dust on the ukulele? <laughs> yeah, it's super, brother. It's super. Yeah, upload a song. I saw your your whistle stuff. Yeah, I have not. I did pick it up yesterday. I had a friend come over, and she was, you know, strumming it. So we were kind of tuning it together. But uh, I did pick it up yesterday or the other day. <laughs> At Brian, I just did my... So, okay, great. Yeah, I knew there was somebody who went online and did a website, sent a, a few that called me. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I knew I had talked to somebody about that. But I couldn't remember the gist of one who it was or two if they had any issues. So, but dude, you're a freaking engineer. So everything's easy for you. <laughs> yeah. So this gentleman here uh, got, got it done. Ah, sweet. Yeah, thanks for, thanks, for, thanks for being here. You know, thanks for, thanks for putting that information out. Uh, hello, Chris. How long did you extend your visa? And my mask, how much it costs? So, yeah, that's another thing, guys. Let's, uh, I don't think I could share the screen out, which is fine. But let's do Philippines immigration. I want to send you guys, so you can do a lot of stuff online now. And I highly, highly recommend the online visa process. It's just so easy. You could do it from your underwear and the couch, man. It's just I posted a link in the in the in the chat right there. I'll also post the link in the video description. Um, I don't remember how much it costs. So there's some things about 
two months versus six months. Like I was able to do a six month one time and now I can't. And I, I, this is, I don't know the truth behind it. There's some speculation. I think it's around age or I don't know, whatever, but I just do two months extensions. Um, and I don't remember how much they cost. Super simple, um, easy to do online. Um, every year you get an ACR card that you'll have to refresh. I apologize. I don't, I don't know how much all that stuff costs, but it's not, it's not expensive to do super. The visas, the visas are super, super easy guys. We can be here for three years on a tourist visa. We leave the country for 24 hours, three years resets again. So, um, it's just super, super simple. Um, yeah. Yep. As far as the actual cost and stuff, I can't remember 1500 pesos or so 20, 30 bucks a month. Not, not too bad. Read somewhere about getting an onward plane ticket. Yes, a flex one or one to cancel it. Nick, you're absolutely right. So when you come here to the Philippines, you need to show an exit within 30 days, I believe it is. So what a lot of guys do is they go out to a place called onwardticket.com and they buy a fake ticket and they show that. So yeah, I think you do it within 24 hours or so. It costs you like 15 US bucks, it's exactly what I did. I had an onward ticket that I showed immigration as I'm going through. So it showed an exit. I think it was whatever, two weeks after I got here. But you're right. You need to show that. I don't know if she's still doing this, but Jennifer Terry, uh, when I came over here, was a phenomenal resource for that kind of information. Visas, travel, COVID crap, whatever, right? She was just a really good resource for that. I don't know if she's still blogging that kind of content, but you're absolutely right. Um, that is what you'll need to do is show, show an exit. So great question, Nick. Did you visit? Yeah, no, dude, I just ate. I wish I did. I miss, I miss a good milkshake, honestly. I miss a good milkshake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, gamer. How you doing, brother? Hope you're good there, man. Hope you're good there. Without the heat guard, you'll sweat your nuts off on a bike. Without the heat guard. Yeah? I'm trying to think. Heat guard. You talking exhaust? Or gear? So one of the things I do with gear when I'm riding all day on a bike, Vernon, is I'll do like long sleeve, right? And uh, long pants, long sleeve. It's not really protection from if I come off the bike, it's more sun protection. I also wear a neck, uh, a neck thing that I'll get wet and then, you know, cools me down a little bit, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, heat, heat, sun protection is really important as you're riding around. Joe got really burnt one time when we were dri down, driving down to, uh, what's it, Simula? Had, she had a freaking burn mark on her back from her jeans and her shirt. Poor girl. But yeah, hello from Central Florida. I like your Royal Enfield, man. Yeah, Sully. That little that little Hunter 350, man, it's a great bike. I freaking love that bike. The seat is a little bit uncomfortable for a long riding. And the riding position, honestly, is a little bit cramped for me. But as long as I get off every couple hours or hour or so and stretch, I'm good. There's really no good pannier system yet, too. I'm really waiting for Gibi to come out with some panniers for that. It's a fun little bike, though. It's a torquey little machine. It's got a really good sound to it. I love that little bike. It is a great little bike. I'll, I'll keep it because what I'm seeing is, is there's guys here that will come into town. And, you know, and I, can, I can let guys ride it around. We can do trips together and stuff like that. It's one of the things I'm actually looking to do is, is get kind of get several bikes and then take let's You know, let's, let's go out and ride, right? Let's go to Bohol. Let's get, you know, three or four guys. Let's go out to Camotas and that kind of deal. So I'll probably keep that bike and uh, have it be a bike that, you know, other guys can ride on. So, I, but yeah, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of Royal Enfield too. I think they're just crushing it, man. They saw a hole in the market and they are just freaking crushing it. That Himalayan 450, man, that bike is going to just going to sell like hot kit. I mean, so many people are, I, I'm for one, I'm after the, it's just a complete hole in the market. This, these, these, you know, everyone's building 1250 GSs, African Twin, 1100, whatever, right? Just these big Mondo bikes. They're just not practical for most of the world, you know? And you look at Southeast Asia, the Vietnam, Philippines. I mean, most of the people are on two wheels, you know? And then United States, you have, you know, not even 20% of the population is on a motorcycle, right? Whatever, maybe less than 10%. So um, they just, they sell more bikes here. And those big CC bikes are just not, they're not practical. So, Yeah. Yeah, really excited about what Royal Enfield is up to in, for, for this particular region. You know, well, they're based on India too, right? So they're building bikes that are that 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 uh, that are, that fit for the region. Ooh. Uh, great question, Ryan. I don't know anything about the ride in Malaysia. I have no clue. Yeah, I want to find out though. Yeah, man. 
I don't know anything. If anyone knows about the ride in Malaysia, let me know. I do know Vietnam and Thailand are supposed to be just epic and phenomenal. I can't wait. I can't wait to ride Vietnam and Thailand. Um, and you can probably get bigger bikes there. I see some guys on some big GSs kind of riding around Thailand. Um, but yeah, I don't know anything about Malaysia and riding there. Yeah, great question, man. If anyone knows, drop a, drop a comment. That's a good point. So, I mean, it is, but it isn't, right? I, yeah. I guess if this, so I had a guy come here in Cebu, showed up in Holy Week, like, dude, everything's closed. You know, the mall was closed, or was the mall closed? I don't remember. I was in freaking, I didn't know it was Holy Week. I actually went out to Brock Guy, which is probably, I mean, dude, it was so packed, man. It was so packed. But anyways, yeah, it's, everyone goes out of the city, but if, if stuff's closed and you're here, you know, touring, it, it might not be the best time to come. But yeah, that's a good point, though. Good point. Yeah, don't forget Christmas time. Yeah, from November to mid-January, Philippines is a nightmare for traffic. Okay, all right. Yeah, Christmas. Yeah, people are coming home. Yeah, we actually, and it's a good point you brought that up because I remember Joe was trying to get back before Christmas and couldn't. All the ferries were booked for like a week. So that's another thing. Yep. Yeah, Christmas music already playing in September. <laughs> yes. Dude, Christmas music starts after Labor Day here. It just it starts up in September. I remember that too. It's so great. They start bringing out the decorations. Huge Christmas spirit. Huge Christmas spirit. Where are we at? 847. Okay, good. Good time. Yeah. Uh, yep, Brian. Lord, I did my social security here and it took 10 minutes. Awesome, guys. Really appreciate the feedback on that. That's good to know. Hopefully, I remember that. That's pretty cool. Paul reached out. Dude, what a community. I'm telling you, Benny, that is one thing. That is one thing that I was not expecting when I moved here is the man, the male friends, the guy friends. It's just awesome. Awesome. It, bloggers and not bloggers, the guys that I'm meeting and we're all guys, we're all just sitting around. We're all the same age, whatever, within 10 years or so, we're all talking life. Like, what is it like to be an older male? You know, what dating like all that stuff. It's just epic, man. I've learned so much about myself uh, in the last several months, just by these interactions. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have the same experience, you know? And in the States, I just didn't have that. I mean, I had my buddy Eugene and, and Brandon and some guys, right, John, some guys I worked with, right? But I didn't have these close friends like I do now. You know, and some of it's just time, right? We're just so busy in the United States and working, working, working. And here, you know, we'll sit in a coffee shop for two hours and just chat, right? So, ah, oh, it's just so cool, the community of guys. But absolutely, Paul, I mean, Paul's got so much going on for him to do that, you know? Hey, go, go check on Chris. I mean... That's freaking, yeah, I was really blown away by by that and him doing that. Really cool gesture. Hey, Larry, how's it going? I hope all is good in uh, the Carolinas. Hope you're good there. You picked it up. I presume it was in the way then, yeah. Well, she was playing it. She was trying to tune it. She, I think she got it tuned. <laughs> uh, glad you hear you all you tune up. Yeah, man, I know, brother. Dude, it is Gosh, it is just amazing. It is just amazing. <laughs> oh, I need some more tea. Mm. I can't believe it. I just, I'm blown away, right? I'm just blown away by what's available for us. You know, because we come from, we come from the space of just like nothing, right? We come from the space of like no options, no availability, and when we first get here, we just got to be careful, right? We can't operate from scarcity, you know? And, and then you don't want to do the other extreme like I see guys do, right? Where they just, they date and date and date and date and date. So you just, you know, it's, it's a fine line. Because then we get kind of get of a bad rep, you know? But it is just, man, amazing, amazing. Yes, hey, tell Brian Ward the old, to ask old dog. He's knowledgeable about the subject. He also tells you to bring a phone with you. Your bank or switch security may send you a message with the code you need. Okay. Yeah. Bank codes and stuff like that. Sure. Sure. Yes. It's from the ukulele. <laughs> yeah, man. There's a video I'm dying to do about my night in Makati. <laughs> oh, it includes, it includes. <laughs> oh, never mind. Hello from Southern California. Yes. What's up? 
85 viewers. Yeah, 85 viewers. Yeah, I'm losing them now. I'm talking about my trip in Makati. Oh, too wild and crazy, gentlemen. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Nope, motorcycle, buy gas tank. Keep the, oh, okay. All right. Without the big bike. Okay. Yeah. I haven't had any issues with my bike on the heat. It is air-cooled. Uh, but, yeah, I haven't had any issues with that at all. Sorry, I got to keep my whistle wet here. All right. Motorcycle by the gas tank to keep the engine heat from frying, you know, without without it, big bike, you'll get heat from the motorcycle. Some of that just depends on the bike. My uh, infield 350 is air-cooled, so uh, it can get a little bit warm. But uh, I haven't had any issues. It's been fine. Yeah, no, no issues there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Hunter 350 has got a really different look, right? It's the combination of uh, of a classic and and the, and the more modern look. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah. I have a 1100cc, but do not. Yep. Yeah, it depends on the bike. I know Harleys can run a little bit hot. I know my KTM was running hot. Uh, so it depends on the bike. Right, not all of them run hot, but some of them do. Uh, are any in the Philippines similar motorcycle market? Yes, I think they are, Philip. I think it's a very similar mo market as far as the type of riding. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Just highly densely populated areas. I mean, the Hunter 350 was designed to be like a city commuter, an urban commuter. So, and then of course the Himalayan. I mean, you don't have the Himalayans out here, um, but we do have mountainous terrain, you know. Chris, I'm going to set you a challenge. Learn a Christmas, learn a Christmas tune, and you have plenty of time. All right, all right, donate. All right, you'll donate a hundred to a charity in your name. All right, man. All right, yeah. I, there is a song. I I actually have a, a a good friend who who is a musician here in the Philippines, and uh, she uh, she's off. She's helping me out with the ukulele. So uh, I'll ask her to to kind of give me some lessons. <laughs> My night in my dude, my gosh, brother. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> if you were to buy a condo for whatever reason, would you prefer Cebu City Makani or BGC? You know, we were talking a little bit about this, Lex, and I feel like I I don't know. I, I feel like owning is not the best of options for us. I, I, just because I so I was in Selenia, I stayed there for a year, like they're building a couple new towers really great but dude the elevator has been down for almost a year now one of the elevators in the tower i was in so that's the concern that we have is we buy these properties and then they just don't maintain them and so that would be my concern about buying but what i would personally what i would like to do is get a group of guys together and then have places all throughout the philippines so i have a place in cebu i have a place in vgc in makati have a place in davao city and then kind of work your way around um, the area, but I think Cebu City is a great. I don't know, man. Gosh, I really loved my time in Makati. I loved it there. I really did. And and uptown and BGC, it just kind of depends. Ah, it's hard, man. There's just so many good options. It really, Lex. It depends on what you're into. It really does depend on what you're into. You know, if you're like a city guy and you like that kind of vibe, like a real modern city, like you don't necessarily need the Philippines kind of vibe, then those would be good. Cebu City, I still feel like it's a big city, but you can you can get out real quick in the in the like the Philippines. Um, so it just depends, man. And then you know, then from there, there's all kinds of options. But I think if I was to buy something, if I was gonna, I would it would be Cebu City for me. Yeah, yeah. And then, but kind of. Go back and forth to a bunch of different regions. Yeah, great question. Keep your whistle wet. I didn't know you played. Yeah, my, she's talking for this long, man. Gets me. Yeah, it's hard. Ooh. In the area there, the tune, there's a term, no longer chick boy. It's ukulele boy. <laughs> it's just incredible, gentlemen. It really is amazing. It really, it is, but it isn't, right? Like, so it's not like they're greeting you off the airplane, right? But, you know, for me, being single in 58 in states, there's just, like, really no options for me. And here there, there's a lot. 
I'm, I'm, I will be doing that video on, on dating though, because it is a different dynamic and it can be a little bit of a slow roll. There's online dating apps and stuff that work really, really, really well. And there's some that are just, you know, you're, you're looking for problems. So um, it, 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 the things that I've learned a lot over in that, yeah. Have you seen many BMW 3 or 350 event? I have not seen many BMWs. Um, yeah, yeah. No, appreciate it, Hex. So BMW in general, I have not seen. A, I do see some 1250 GSs every now and then. I'll see those around a little bit. Mostly, I, I, I see the smaller. I see mostly scooters. Honda ADV 160 is, is, is really popular. The NMAX is really popular. My uh, Royal Enfield is a little bit. There's some of those bikes. Um, there's a guy here that has a Ducati, uh, um, supermoto. Um, yeah. So there's, there's a little bit of bikes, but yeah, seen, but not many BMWs. Yep. Yeah. I like my Honda eight motorcycles, but can stay, but can't stand. Yeah. You can just swap out the seat. You know, the gentleman earlier here, he actually just bought one of the, uh, one of the bikes. I uh, can't remember the hell's the name of that bike anyways he just bought the bike and got the seat replaced on it so yeah you can get the seat swapped out uh meet lots of red pill yes guys exiting in the west yeah nick i think you find that here you find that here too i do meet a lot of guys that are like that but they don't stay that way for very long <laughs> they're they're a couple i was kind of one of them and it wasn't necessarily i felt like by intention i just I really wanted to focus on other things, right? But you'll meet a lot of guys like that, but it's hard, man. You know, it's hard when you're around, you know, people that want to take care of you, people that really are out for you to have a good life in the area and just loving, kind, sweet. It, it just, it blows your perspective away in that world because we're just not used to that type of setup. And when you're around a, a like a country full of that, you kind of uh, most guys let that go. Not all, but I would say a good a good portion of them do. But yeah, there's some guys out here for sure. Like I said, I was kind of one of them, and yeah, was your one night in Macau, one night in Bangkok. Yeah, man, dude, it's crazy. So much fun, so much fun. And I don't drink alcohol, so it was just like, you know, the three of us were out, just had a blast. I probably got back to my room around two in the morning. It was just nuts. It was great. It was so much fun. P. Burgess Street. P. Burgess Street is absolutely epic, man. It's a short street. Just crazy. I wanted to, guys, I was just so busy. I didn't, I vlogged bits and pieces of it. I'll do a video. I, I got to be careful. It's definitely, uh, it's, uh, yeah. But there's a whole, oh gosh, I don't even know if I can talk about it. There's a whole different vibe here with, with the people that you meet that are like dateable and professional kind of deal. <laughs> Oh yeah, I can't go into that. Sorry, I'll I'll, I'll try at some point to, to come up with a, a elegant way of of putting it, but it's different in the West. I feel like there there are a lot of people just being practical around that type of profession, and our uh, college students trying to go through school and um, that kind of deal. Versus, I think in the West, it's more of a drug culture that kind of thing. Um, around that employment, like, you know, professional kind of thing. But here it's very different. You, you see a lot more of a, like just a practicality to it. Hey, I'm getting through college and, and paying my way kind of through that. And um, so I, I see a lot of that, right? I'm seeing a lot and then just talking with other guys about their experience too. It's, it's very different. Now, I'm not an expert like on what it is in the States or here either, but it's kind of what I'm noticing. It's a very different environment here. Than in the West. It's also too a lot more, I feel, socially acceptable here than in the West. Yeah, referring to Social Security, thanks guys. Good to know. I'll probably get it done. Yeah, still might as well. Might as well, Brian, right? But possible updates, etc. Sounds like it's definitely doable. Yeah, I, that's great for me as well, right? Because I'm 53. So um, something uh, I've got some time yet to do, but I'm sure a lot of guys will have that question. One of my friends has a Harley. Yeah, yeah. He has to stop if he rides sometime lower gears. Yep. Since the engine will shut down because overheating air cool, liquid cool is so much better. Yeah. That type of bike here, man, would be a nightmare for many reasons. Many reasons. Slow moving traffic. Yeah. It's just not really super practical. Are you seeing any inflation there? Groceries, restaurants, rent. I do think, Ryan, there was some inflation here. 
Um, I, I kind of came at the, uh, when that already happened and the costs are just so much cheaper than what we're used to anyways, that, um, that I, I haven't really noticed it. No, but I, from people who had been here for whatever, 10 years or so have reported that there's been some inflation over the past several years, like global inflation. Right. So, but not nothing like what we're used to. We're still, we're still talking about costs and, you know, two, two to 3000 us range. Right. So, I mean, inflation when you're, you know, maybe whatever, a couple more hundred dollars on, on things is not a big deal for when you're talking that type of money, right? For most of us. Ah, yeah, great question though, buddy. Yeah, pretty sure it will call the fans. It did actually. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sir, we need to check the, the bad girl list. And then it was like, what the heck am I doing here? <laughs> you can, only one at a time. Yeah, anyways, guys. <laughs> nothing happened. Nothing happened. I, I I promise. Once once it once I realized what was going, I, I just thought these girls were interested in me. <laughs> once I realized it's like, oh no, I can't do this. Sorry. You guys have a good night. But it was, oh my gosh. A night, a night I will never forget i mean sir you know we're 53 i'm out there on the dance floor dancing away by the time i leave there at two in the morning my legs are already shot i'm tired <laughs> i'm like oh guys it's, but this is the kind of crap when the men are sitting around drinking the coffee we all talk about it's just God, i just love it man it's so much fun it is so much fun that oops i skip over somebody here uh what's the custom process when arriving What's the customs process when we're not arriving into Manila and who checks if you have more than 10,000 and how it, yeah, I don't know, but I just be careful. I, I seriously, I, I don't really think you need to bring that much cash. I can't think of, I mean, unless you're, yeah, I mean, you just, you can transfer money, right? When you get here, you know, bring a couple thousand for sure. You know, honestly, I think a better thing to do is try to get some pesos ahead of time, you know? Uh, and then if you can't get pesos ahead of time, just, just cash like 50 out at the airport. You don't want to cash out a bunch at the airport. You're not going to get the best exchange rate. So, um, but yeah, dude, you, you wouldn't really want, like, I would not want to carry that much money around with me. It's just, there's no need, you know, whatever, a couple thousand us just to get you, I mean, get you through that first couple weeks, really. And even then, I mean, crap, how much are you going to spend in the first couple weeks? You know, even a thousand, right? More than enough, more than enough to get you through you know, that first little bit of time and just kind of, because when you get here, your head's not on straight. You've just got, you know, would you really want to carry that much cash or you're, you know, you've been flying for whatever, 30 hours. You know what I mean, brother? So, um, so yeah, that's how I would, I would roll with that. Had a trouble with heat with my liquid cooled Hondas. One, uh, uh, one and stop. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you got here, Jay. You know, that's what you got here. Stop and go, stop and go traffic all you know, when you're in the city, that's, that's the riding experience here for sure. For sure. Very rarely do I get above 30 miles an hour and you know, whatever. So especially if, you, but you can avoid it, right? A lot of people talk about the traffic, but honestly, you can avoid it. I've lived in big cities most of my life. And it, to me, this traffic in Cebu city is no different than Denver. You know, if anything, it's worse here. It's worse here. I feel, you know, you can, you can get out here on a Sunday and the traffic is like nothing here, like everyone's home. You know, to me, Denver was 24 seven, you know, you had to get up at like freaking five in the morning to beat the traffic here. You, you don't, you've got a couple hours in the morning. You got a couple hours in the evening and you're in and out of it. I, people like, I think to me, they make a bigger deal of the traffic, but whatever it's, it, it's all subjective, right? Traffic, good, bad kind of deal, whatever. Yep. Definitely need to check out CQR. Philip, I cannot wait to check out CQR. I cannot wait. Yeah. Yeah. I agree, man. I agree. Honestly, Komotus so far has been, I love Komotus. I love hanging out in Komotus Island. It's such a great time riding. I love, it's a little hillier. Um, and just, you see some really cool scenes where you're coming down, right? And then you just look out over the of the ocean. Yeah, no, I, I can't wait to check out CQR. It'll probably be a while, but I love being out there. Yes, sorry, brother. CF Moto 450, yeah, yeah, love that bike. The, the, the 450 Adventure is something, you know, I kind of have my eye on as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Do really appreciate you. Thank you. 
also got a new seat for my Honda since the stock seat. Yeah. Yeah. I was just, you know, talking with him about uh, the seat and uh, the only bike that I'd actually never didn't replace my factory seat on was my Duke. Every other bike I freaking went to, uh, you know, aftermarket what seat concepts and uh, seat concepts and got a seat. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, when you do the series on dating, maybe two nights in the car, ask a couple of your buddies to toss in there, hilarious. Yeah, that's good times. Jeff, man, if I could do, I mean, there has been so many conversations where the, you know, just the guys sitting around the table, if I could turn on the camera and vlog that, I mean, it would be freaking, it would be so viral. Of course, no one wants to be on camera talking about that, but, you know, just the guys talking about life, man. You know, here we are, middle-aged men, and whatever, 50s, 60s, and so on. We're dating, you know, what we're dating, you know, and, uh, you know, 20 and 30-year-olds. And it's just the stories, you know. It's just, dude, it's hilarious. It is so, so funny. In particular, that, you know, I, I could barely even stand up after dancing for 45 minutes. And I'm supposed to function with two, yeah, anyway. So it's like, you guys have a good night. <laughs> but that's what it's like here. And we just laugh, man. We just... Have so much fun. Oh, brother. I can't wait for you to come out, man. Can't wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I don't think we're going to do smart in this trip. I mean, maybe. Like, we have, we're going to start in Lete, and from there, we don't know. I'm mean, seriously, this trip could last two weeks. It could last two years. Um, we really don't have an agenda. And I say we, I mean, Chad and I. Um, and kind of our plan is to, you know, we might get to a city and then, shoot, we might fly back, you know, whatever, you know, spend. You know, the, we, we might st we're going to start Naval or whatever, and then we get to Naval and it's we're there for two weeks. And it's like, you know what? Let's go back to Cebu and refuel and whatever. Get down to Ormoc and kind of you know kind of bounce back and forth kind of deal. That's how I see it. But uh, Samar, I'm not sure on this trip, but maybe there's a bunch of places we want to go and check out. You know what? Let's just let's bring up the map. Uh, but yeah, Samar, absolutely right. Not a lot of people have have done a lot of logging through there. Um, I'm, I would be interested in doing that, but right now what I think we're going to do, we're probably going to start, uh, an Ormoc, where the heck are we? Yeah. Start an Ormoc and then go up right away, go up to Billy Ron and do some stuff in Naval and like, check out this Island here. There's another Island. Yep. These two islands here, Derek talked about this Island. Um, and then from there, I, it's hard to say, but I think from there we'll go down to so good. And spend whatever, maybe a night or two there, not long, but then go back down to Lilawan. Man, so I spent some time here, just so beautiful. This whole riding here, all this region is epic, just gorgeous. And then take a ferry over from here down to Shirgao City, and then we'll be in Mindanao. And from there, who knows? But I don't know how long that'll take us to get to Shirgao. I mean, that that could be a couple weeks. So um, we're both. I mean, it's a trip of a lifetime. It really is a trip of a lifetime. I cannot wait. And also, too, this trip is something I'm actually looking at. So this is a scouting trip in a lot of ways for me. This might be something I do with some guys. Like, we four or five guys, let's go, man. Let's go ride it, right? Let's go check it out. Let's get out of the city. Let's go ride Lete. Let's go ride Mindanao. And then, you know, kind of end up in General Santos. Um, and then whatever, right? So I'm so, so excited about kind of this trip and what it looks like even years from now uh, for me and, community and, you know, guys and doing that. So, but Samar would be fun. Samar would be fun. Do they have a Kimiko 250 there on the island? They might have, though. I've seen some Kimikos. Yeah, I think those are around, Pat. Yep. Hey, man. How you doing, brother? Hey, another guy. Check this guy out, man. Really, dude, I'm digging your channel. This the your new channel that you're putting out. Has got some just really relevant good content. So if you guys aren't watching uh, John and uh, California Expat, check them out. I've linked some videos in my community pe page there that I felt like are really helpful to guys. So man, hats off to you. Hope you're good there. Can't wait to see you in uh, you know Davos City. I'll be there. I don't know when, brother, but I'll be there and I'll for sure look you up when I'm down there. We'll have to do a video together because uh, at that point we'll be uh, you know just uh, way in deep. So I'm yeah, looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. Have you gone cycling on a bike, bicycle during your... I have not done any cycling. I, there is, though, Dean. There's a lot of cycling here. Uh, Pahol is a great cycling destination. Cebu is, I think, it's just a little bit too crazy and congested with traffic. I do see cyclists on the road quite a bit. Uh, there's a guy in the community group. You've probably seen him. I think it's, he goes by Dave Smith. 
Um, he's a big cyclist, um, but he's actually in Thailand now. But yeah, Iloilo is a big cycling city. They've got designated bike paths. Uh, Bohol looks like it's great just because there's not a lot of road traffic. There are some guys here in Cebu City, but I, I don't know, man. There just seems like so much after everything. Yeah, my ambition to ride around. Yeah, dude, you could ride around. I mean, Dean, you could ride through here. Whatever, right? You get rain. It's 80 degrees. It's not like you're going to get hypothermia, you know? Yeah, you could ride around the Philippines easily. Uh, 2 a.m., I know, right? <laughs> Brother, oh, my gosh. Yeah, just amazing. Just amazing. Just amazing. <laughs> Jay. Hey, I've been following you since last year. Yeah, I truly appreciate your content and style. I usually miss your lives here in Seattle. All right, yeah, no worries, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, thanks for being here, Jay. I appreciate it, man. I know it's it's late your time, so thanks, man. You mentioned you uh, buying a place in Cebu. Um, yeah, Makati, yes, with the airport like Mokhtan. Yes, man. Good point, Sam. Good point. The Mokhtan airport, guys, is just so easy. It is so easy. Modern. They've got a massage place, so I got there super early. We got a massage, a legit massage. <laughs> we got a massage place down on the terminal. Um, what it was a little bit expensive, right? Well, I mean, still cheap for. Uh, you know what? Let's pull up. Uh, let's pull up a conversion because I think it was around fifteen hundred pesos, which is expensive because you can you can get one for like seven hundred, one five oh oh. But yeah, dude, that's twenty six dollars. Still cheap for United States standard. But anyways, love that airport. If you get there early, know that in the domestic terminal, there is a massage down towards, I think it's like gate 11 or 12. But yeah, great airport, got food, easy. I mean, it took me a half hour, if that. Once I got dropped off, it took me, I had to get my boarding pass printed, go through security at the gate, less than a half hour. Super, super, super easy. Big fan. Does the acceptable age gap seem smaller in Metro Manila area versus Cebu or Duma? That's a great question, Lex. It is. Metro Manila is different in dating. And I feel like this is something I'm going to dive into in the video. I feel like Metro Manila is more of an, is a dating app uh, city. Like you want to use a dating app to really get connected. So there, and someone brought this up in one of the comments about Elo Elo and the stigma around dating. There is a little bit of a stigma when you're talking about some middle class and upper class Filipinas about dating you. So a great way to break that ice or break that barrier, it's not like you can't date them, but they're definitely not, a, they, they may or may not be super approachable. Like, especially when you walk, like you're going to see them, they might be with their family and that kind of deal. You really want to be careful in your approach when you're talking about a middle and upper class uh, Filipina. Cause they're, they're, you know, they're, they already have kind of a mindset of like, this is, you know, this is a cheek boy foreigner, right? So they really just kind of avoid you in some ways, but they're also interested and, in, you know, think we're all, built you get what i'm saying right so they they're, they're interested but you you just want to it is a different way to get to them and i think the online dating is probably a better avenue to get to that upper and middle class filipina and in particular with a couple of dating apps um and then in the province that's also different where it is more of it's not a dating app it's more of an approach but even then it they're shy like i was dating this girl just recently um, and she was afraid to kind of be seen. Like there's this whole, like we had to be really like, you know, she didn't want to be seen with a foreigner because then people start talking and that kind of deal. So there is a different, there is a dynamic here for sure. Um, some of it, depending on where you're at, might be online or dating applications. Some of it's in person and then some nuances around that. I've got a whole, I'm, I'm telling you this document that I have on the, the Philippines dating Bible, maybe I'll title that video is is pretty big a lot of nuances right uh lived in makati for one year had a had a blast everything is convenient definitely hits hit, hits the budget yes i would say randy over uh over three thousand right is is a good budget for that area which still isn't bad what 30 36 000 us it's not bad what's the typical cost of a motorcycle with with a higher cc i can't remember how much did i pay for mine was it 40 350,000 uh 35000 is it 6000 no i can't i think you can spend so you can get a scooter i think around 2 or 3 where am i at here you can get a scooter for around 2 or 3000 i think well 1500 pesos let's just say 1600 pesos for an ADV 160 
Yeah, so, sorry, 160,000. So that's like, that's almost three grand. So a Honda ADV, I think is around the 160,000 mark. That's almost three grand. So that's that's your upper upper scale uh, scooter. And then I really, I can't remember how much I spent. I think it was 350,000. So yeah, I spent around 6,000 for my bike. So I'd say that's kind of the average. Yeah. And Cebu property is better. Like you mentioned, the airport. Yep. A lot better than Manila airport. It is. I like it. Gosh, I just, I loved Makati and BGC though, too. I mean, that was so nice to be there. I felt it was just easy. I, it didn't feel like I was in the Philippines though, right? I felt like I was in a really, like a really nice modern city, you know, like San Diego or whatever. I actually hadn't been to San Diego, but it felt like this warm kind of nice, clean, modern city. Actually, BGC felt like I was in Disney World. It felt like I was in Disney World, really clean and everything painted and, you know, really, you know, I felt like I was in Disney. Uh, but Cebu, Cebu has got a lot too. Yeah, just, gosh, so many options, gentlemen. It's just, you know, travel around. Get here and travel around. <laughs> no comparison between, yeah, right, and Cebu airports at all. Yeah, I mean, you still probably have to go through Manila quite a bit, though, to kind of get to some destinations. I think you can fly Cebu to Bangkok. Uh, but a lot of destinations, you're still going to go through Manila. Uh, I saw a lovely customized Harley Davidson Fat Boy once in London-based Harley sales showroom called yeah uh, called Wars. Different mirrors, yeah, man, yeah. There, there's some here. There actually is a Harley dealership here, in um, in Cebu City. So, and there's a riding community here. It's just it's a little bit small, but it's here. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, man. No, really, I appreciate it. Yeah, just everything. Everything, meeting up with you, getting to know you, chatting with you, and your care package. I mean, that is that's just freaking epic. Dude, Kevin, man, hope you're safe there, man. Stay safe. You know, really, hats off to you and what you're doing for work, job, you know, anyone, law enforcement, EMT, fire. Uh, just it's hard, hard work. And appreciate what you're up to, brother. Stay safe. Please, please. Yeah. My first time through customs in Mokdown, I dropped the customs form in a box, scan one to three bags. Second time, same thing, but in scanning bags, they just waved me through. Yeah, it's super easy here in Mokdown. Um, yeah, really easy airport, easy to get in and out, minutes. When you when you leave, though, I, shot, I, I thought I, shot, I should have shot a video on this, and I was thinking about this. When you leave out, you want to try to grab a white taxi. So there's a white taxi booth. You kind of walk through. You leave the airport, you walk through and just kind of walk around. You'll cross over to the center island and then you'll see a white taxi booth. You want That's what you want to get when you're leaving. Or you can do grab, I guess, but get a white taxi. And there's a white taxi booth there. And look for that. There was uh, people standing there giving out a little ticket. It's it's uh, basically it's a complaint number. It's 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 one of the this is Cebu because uh, Manila, you want to use grab. Unfortunately, the taxis in Manila are really bad, but the taxis in Cebu Provided you pick up the right ones are, are not bad at all. It's the white taxis. I think my travel to Melodine have prepared me. Yeah, General Philippines, bikes, girls, traffic. Seems familiar. Yeah, yeah. No, I think you're right. Is that Medellin, Colombia? Hmm. Am I reading that correctly? Yeah, I think it's much safer. That's the other thing, guys. It's so it's if we're if we're coming from any city in the West. You know, bring that way of thinking and you're, you'll be just fine as far as safety. It's so safe here. I actually don't worry about it. We were just talking about that the other day. Where were we? I can't remember. I was talking with some guys. It's like, you know, the last thing we worry about, you know, shooters and that kind of stuff. You just don't even think about it here. And and alcohol consumption is a lot less, too, where uh, I realize the United States is a pretty pretty big alcohol-consuming culture by, by nature. And here it's really not. I mean, it's here, but not like the West for sure. But yeah, I think you're right. I think it's if you can survive in Medellin and, and that kind of deal, you'll be just fine here. Yeah. Can't wait for your Makati BG yeah, video scale. <laughs> I don't know if I could do a video on that, Sam. Uh, I don't think I could do a video on that. As much as I want to, I don't think I can, man. I don't, as much as I want to, I don't think I can. I highly recommend flying it. Yeah, yeah, I agree, man. Benny, you're right on. Yeah, you can fly in from, what was that, L.A. or San Francisco? I can't remember which. Maybe both. You can do L.A. to uh, uh, Taipei and then Taipei to Cebu. Yeah, man. Yep. Yep. 
I like the Honda 12500 Club. Yeah, try it. But I, I think Thailand, I'm not sure. Ideal on and off the road. Yeah. Nick, I think it's just a little bit underpowered is my only concern about that bike. I like the concept of it. I like the idea of it. I think it's just a little bit underpowered. I would like to see like a 150 cc or maybe even like a 200 cc then i think it would be great but i really i think you really need some torque man especially when you're going up these hills and stuff to get around traffic a little bit of a torque of your bike uh it, it'll help you and you know whatever maybe save your life right to get around stuff uh but yeah that's my only complaint about the bike i like the look i like the suspension i like all the accessories i like the idea behind it just i feel like it's just you need a little bit more the honda cbr 500r has an e-clutch option. That is good to know. I know guys who are asking for that. Be nice than alternative Honda DCT cycle riding. It's just easier adding this in bike model than the DCT. All right, that's good to know, brother. I appreciate that. Yep. Chris, what happened to you and the young lady in your earlier videos? Was she your girlfriend? Knows to see you soon. Yeah, retired uh, retired five years to Ballenbahn. Look, freaking love Ballenbahn. Yeah, 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 yeah. What happened there? earlier videos yeah no worries i assume because you're talking about Ballenbahn, you're actually talking about christine she's a sweet girl my gosh sweet girl yeah uh if you guys want to be upset with me about someone i've dated it's that girl i'll be in all honesty oh she was so sweet yeah good friend uh but yeah we're we're yeah uh, it's just hard man oh that, that girl breaks my heart it's, it's guys, it's why we don't want to do an LDR. We get here in LDR and a lot of times it just doesn't work. It doesn't. Um, so don't do an LDR. <laughs> get here, hook up with a community, hook up with some guys to help you. Cause like we all, we all think about this, right? We all think about, you know what? I'm going to meet a girl, help me transition and that kind of deal. Dude, it's a mistake. It is a mistake. And we all know it is, but we do it anyways, right? Hook up with a group of guys, hook up with a, if you're going to, Hook up with my group in Cebu City. Hook up with with freaking Steve's group up in Manila. Hook up with uh, uh, I don't, someone needs to start one in Dumaguete. Hook up with the Dumaguete group down there. But hook up with some guys and then get here. Figure out where you want to go. Um, because when we do the LDR and we get here and we don't, we, we, things don't work out. I mean, gosh, it's just it's not good for anybody, right? It's just not. Oh, but yeah, sweet girl, sweet girl. You know the U.S. had. The salons in every small town with the girls. You know the U.S. had saloons, okay, with in every small town with girls on the menu. In the 1700s, uh, tough cowboy days, gambling and girls wide open in the public. I think when women got the right to vote, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think brothels and stuff. Sure, they're around. How much do you pay for health insurance? Right now, I'm self-funded. I'm just using cash. I do need to go out. What's the guy's name? He's got policies through. Uh, I can't remember, but there's a guy that Geo put on in his channel a while ago that does some stuff, and I'm, I'm going to look to kind of move there. I was using Safety Wing for a while, but it was told it's really kind of no good, and right now I'm self-funded, which some guys are. It's Dude, it's easy. It's, it's affordable to self-fund, but, you know, yeah, yeah. Do you have any desire to go to a MotoGP race local? This, I would love to go to a MotoGP race. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. Yeah. Love to. Yes. I haven't watched a lot of I haven't watched a lot of TV or or that kind of deal. But yeah, I did watch the Formula One race that happened uh, just recently. That was great. We actually that was why we're kind of out so late that night is we the, we were watching the Formula One race that came on. I think it started like eleven. Steve, Chris, you have touched on on this topic previously, but could you share how you manage your valuable valuable items like camera phones, laptops when traveling in a small town to beach? Yeah. So the first thing is just kind of keep things out of sight, um, you know, in your hotel, like leave stuff locked up in your hotel room. So I also check the, I check the security of the property, like right away. Um, I check the windows, make sure windows and everything are locked. I slide the doors and stuff to see if they can open. I check the security of the premises. Right. And then I, I always hide my stuff. Like I don't keep anything visible. Um, I have stuff hidden. A lot of guys like this, the pack safe stuff. So that's something I'm inquiring into and I haven't purchased anything like that, but I think that's a really good, I think they're called pack safe. If you look them up, um, they're, they, they're kind of like knife proof kind of, and you can lock stuff to like whatever furniture or closets or stuff. But 
main thing is just keep, keep keeping your room, keeping everything packed up. Don't think visible. I never travel with my passport. Um, all that stuff stays at home. So yeah, I mean, that's another thing, right? Leave stuff at home that you don't need. So obviously you need your passport to come to the Philippines. But when I'm going out to these islands, Stephen, I don't need to bring my passport with me. Just bring a local ID, whatever, and that's that's fine. Just leave all that stuff at home. Bring only what you need and then lock it up. Yeah, great question. Yeah, yeah. But um, it is a challenge. And one of the things I'm going to do in particular when I'm out, I'm also worried about my motorcycle. I've got like a disc brake lock thing that uh, that I can put on the front to lock actually my, my motorcycle that way too. So yeah, great question. But all in all, I feel it's, it's pretty safe and secure. Petty crime though is what what'll get you out here. Not violent crime, but petty. Yeah. Jasper is always, <laughs> oh, it's, he is talking about how I disrespect people. Isn't that funny? <laughs> uh, I have not seen him in forever, man. He's one of those guys. It was really interesting because it's not that he and I were really ever friends, but when I first, it's like a year ago, right? I went over to, uh, I went over to Brock and we were chatting. I would jump into one of his lives and stuff. And uh, I was over in Brockai, and he was in Manila or wherever the heck he was at. I, I don't know. Uh, but I reached out to him. I was like, hey, dude, I'm in, I'm in Brockai. Where's the place I can go find some Wi-Fi? I was like, because my, my hotel Wi-Fi was down. And, you know, we were chatting out back and forth. And then something happened. I don't know what, but he flipped. And then he, he just got real aggressive or whatever. I don't know, man. And I joined another one of his lives, and he's like, dude, he was cussing me out, telling me how I'm trying to steal his view, viewers or whatever. I was like, dude. I just, I got it. I, I moved to this country to get away from crap, like, you know, crazy stuff. So um, that was kind of the last I paid attention to him. So that was over a year ago. I, I have, I have no idea, but it, it sounds like same, same guy, right? <laughs> I wish him the best. I wish anyone the best who's, who's pushing drama content. I, I do. It's just, oof, yuck, right? No, no, thank you. Have you been to Vietnam? I have not been to Vietnam and uh, Da Nang is high on my list. Uh, you know, a lot of people are talking about uh, Vagabond Awake. I think that's the name of the channel in the recent video that they did, like Philippines versus Vietnam. I have not watched that video yet. It is on my kind of watch list to, to check out. But uh, there's a lot, right, with Vietnam and, and uh, some good things there. So, But I have personally not been to Vietnam, uh, but do plan on checking it out at some point. I paid, okay, yeah, 262000 4000 Wow, that's barato. That's, that's cheap, brother. That is so cheap. Yes. So cheap. Wow. Yeah, I agree with you about Makati, especially uh, cool area. I love Makati. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. It reminded me of New York, just a real kind of artsy city vibe. Freaking dug it. Yeah, I could live there, man. Go, went down to the Greenbelt area. I had no time to vlog it. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I love it. Good morning, Chris. Good day. Yes. Be the potato masher. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, good for you. Yes, hope you're good there. Love the love the name. Yeah, Melody in Columbia. Yep, been visiting for a couple of years due to how close it is in the states. Yeah, a lot of guys start that direction. They 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 start in the and I did too. I looked there. I looked Central America, South America. I looked at there. I looked Panama City, or, or Panama uh, was where kind of I heard was a great spot. You know, Nicaragua, El Salvador, uh, Colombia. You know, with Medellin and Bogota. Uh, but the Philippines and then Southeast Asia is kind of where I went to, right? And originally it was Thailand and, and, and Bangkok. And then I found the Philippines and just, you know, the, the, I, there's some benefits to some other countries, but the people is what, you know, everyone says is why they're here. And that is why I really left the United States just because the hate culture and the people and, and wanted a really friendly, um, healthier environment. And so uh, that's what ultimately why I chose this particular country, and I'm I'm happy with it. I'll pl I'll probably plan. You know, I'll be in other countries for sure. Um, what a lot of guys do is they find their Filipino wife and they go to Thailand or Vietnam, right? You know, so you know who knows, right? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. They get through all of it. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah, Medellin, big, big, big destination for sure. Was mine too. Yeah, taxi drivers in Cebu. Yep. I, I'm with you, Matt. I have not had a single problem. Yeah, yeah. I have so. The change thing, though, is one thing I've had a problem with, and so I, I've actually switched to Grab. 
And the, the thing I like about Grab, it's a little bit more, but it's not. And I say that because you don't have to worry about tipping. It's all through Gcash. It all happens electronically. And for me, it's actually cheaper to use Grab than it is to use a taxi. So I've actually switched to Grab. And then I don't have to worry about having any money because it's happened twice where I've only had a thousand pesos and I've had to give that driver a thousand pesos because they're like, oh, I don't have any change, right? So of course they don't. They want, you know, an $18 tip. But anyways, I've switched to Grab, big fan of Grab and um, how that works. So, uh, but yeah, I'm with you. Cebu, Cebu City taxi drivers are, are, are great compared to like Manila. I flew Korean Air both trips. Yep. First. Atlanta, Seoul, Cebu, yep, second JFK, yep. I threw, I think I flew EVA Air, and it was fine too. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people talk about EVA Air and Korean Air. I just renewed my passport, got, that's what I, yep, from J, JIC Square ID, yeah. I got the passport ID too, but uh, that's only good for what, Canada and Mexico, I think. But yeah, I have the same, same thing. To anyone, to anyone to remember signing up for Gcash, did it, so Saturn, I've talked, some guys right now are actually struggling with this. They're having problems verifying their, their uh, Gcash. And I think, and David Bond reminded me because he was also having some issues, but he said, I told him to use his passport and it went right through. So try your passport. Um, I don't remember how I got it working, but it's working. I did it over a year ago, but I do know guys right now who are having problems verifying their G their their Gcash account because I think it's saying use the ACR card. Try your passport. Try your passport. Let me know, Saturn, if you could. The Vagabond Away can be it. Yeah, a lot of people are talking about that video. Yep, I want to watch it. It's on my list. It's on my list. Yep, I agree with Hex. It's good to watch. Yep, it's a lot. I've several friends have talked about that video. Yeah, I was also interested in Denang after seeing Vagabond. Yep, Denang was on my list. It really was. It looks great beach modern beach town um yep culture western amenities i just think yeah i don't know right like i hear the dating and stuff like that might be a little bit hard there's a family dynamic in play um that's very involved with dating there um but i don't know right i don't know this is just things that i hear from from you know the the, the men that i the guys that i meet that are over here talking about it so yeah on my list for sure yeah, it'd be the potato master. True about with taxes. Also, salmon devout. Okay. Yeah, grab. I, I like grab. I could use grab and and BGC was fine. And uh, the other thing I really like about grab is I don't have to tell people where I'm going. Right. Like it's all set up. I just get in and go. So there, I avoid the headache of trying to communicate with somebody like where I want to go, as well as I avoid the headache of paying for it if I don't have change or any of that. Freaking huge fan of grab. Highly recommend it. Um, because honestly, I mean, I know everyone speaks English and that kind of deal. I almost wonder if it's a scam, like they turn on the meter and you spend freaking five minutes trying to figure out where, where to go. Right. But I've had this over and over again where, you, you know, you just, that's what I like about it. The destinations are set. So you don't, you don't have to even have that conversation. Yeah. Look, only four, <laughs> only 14 people can figure out the like button. Yes. Smash like button people. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. X. Yeah. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, Hanoi, just south of Da Nang, is one of the coolest cities in Asia. Yes, that was something. Hey, brother, how you doing, man? Yeah, that is where I want to go. Just south of, uh, of Da Nang, I think it was an hour or so. Uh, but yeah, I hope you're good there, man. Hope you're getting some skiing in. Hope you're not working too hard. Yeah, see, you. good to see you, brother. Yeah, Benny, you just can't use a passport card for flying there. Oh, can't use a passport card for flying there, no, but still works an extra ID. You're right. Yep. Yep, yep. I have I have mine also. No change to scam drivers. Oh, so sleazy. Tell them if you want to get paid. No need to drive the change. Up to you, sir. Yep. More legit. Ask for more. Yeah. Yep. I gave up on GCash. Tried my Randy. I gave up on tried my SRRV card and passport. So, yeah, dude. I know a lot of people who are in that same boat right now. I know David had an issue with it but got it working. I know, I think I did, but mine's working. You could still use it. I, yeah, oh, that's, un, oh, that's rough, man. I don't know what's going on, Randy, but I do know a lot of guys are having some, str some struggles with that. Uh, is Revolt used much there? I don't know about Revolt. I've never heard of it. 
So yeah, yeah, hoping to enjoy it. Yeah, hoping to enjoy Vietnam like Danang. And yeah, Dan, I need to watch that video, guys. I have not seen it. I, I think it's a lot of people are talking about it though. I do think I would try to date. I do think I would try to date a Vietnam. From, okay, I prefer Filipinos for already learned about 13 besides words. I'm with you, Philip. I'm I have same thing. I can't throw that away either. I'm with you. That was one of the things I actually was kind of bothered by when I went up to BGC is like no one no one speaks Bisaya there and it's different. You know? Like I was like, you know, Ampin and you know Basug and 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 Bugnao and uh Gutom and you know none of those words are are used there. Like every word that I know is is nobody nobody spoke Bisaya. And they talk about that too. Like people, you know, here the Filipinos they speak Bisaya. To people in Manila and Tagalog, and they, they can't each other, they can't understand each other even within their own country. So what they do is they they just speak English to each other, which is I thought really 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 interesting. Do you know if Grab takes Discover Card? Um, I don't know, but that might be what people do as a workaround if they can't get GCash to work, is they use a credit card. I think that is what people do. It's unfortunate because I really am a big fan of GCash. I I, I pay my electric bill. Or actually, I don't now, but I pay my uh, uh, my internet and my phone bill with GCash, and of course all my grabs and stuff. I don't put a lot of money in there, right? Maybe whatever, 10, 15, 20,000 pesos at a time. Uh, but you know, most people, most Filipinos are kind of a little bit um, skeptical of GCash, and they feel like it, you could be open up to uh, like losing money or whatever. But I have not had any problems at all. But I, you know, you wouldn't want to keep whatever, 5,000 U.S. in there, just whatever, maybe 500 U.S. at a time. Yeah, also have a passport card. All right, cool. I have the same problems with Gcash. No kidding. Uh, consistent. You can't read your ID if they let you upload. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of guys. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a timing thing. I, I, I know, like I said, David and I had issues but got it working. I gotta get the steak on the grill. Yeah, nah, no worries, brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just added pull. Yeah, to the English words when in Manila, even Cebuanos prefer English over Tagalog. Yeah, it's true. It's true, Ke or uh, Taco. There's a uh, there's a big there is a big kind of you know north south kind of you know issue there where they they, they it. It's not like they don't like each other, but you know, when I talk to my Subuano friends here, they're like imperialist, imperialist Manila. You know, there, there, there is a little bit of this battle in between them. You know, kind of like whatever New York, LA, a little bit of that type of thing, the East versus West. Uh, but it's there, and you know, speaking Visaya, uh, you know, in 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 Manila is you know, it's not uh, looked well upon as well as speaking Tagalog here. Uh, with the Cebuano. So, yeah, it, they're a little bit of a pull there. The Gcash app says it's only available to Philippine citizens. Yes, yeah, so you'll need you'll need a uh, a Philippines phone number. So, uh, you'll, that is definitely a requirement. But then what you have to do is verify it. Um, and once you get it verified, like through your, your passport, G, whatever, ACR card or whatever, once it's verified, then you can... I, and I don't I actually don't know the difference if it's verified or not verified, like what it gives you. I, I did this like a year ago. So, um, but yeah, you, uh, Philippines phone number is is one of the requirements. All right. I think we're caught up on comments. You were about locking or unlocking cards. Yeah, it's Jerry. So I have uh, what two two credit cards. And I could do it right through the application on my on my phone. I can uh, unlock them. I think you're talking about like travel, travel stuff. All that stuff I could do right through the apps on the phone. So it's been easy. I do I do set like a three month reminder um, to do that. Um, so that way, you know, I don't really use cards too much. I pretty much use cash. Geo recommend is wise to use in the Philippines. Yeah, I actually use uh, I use Remitly, uh, but I know a lot of guys use Wise. And, and like it as far as transferring money. Yep. You know, guys, I need just a second. I need to use the restroom. Be right back.
Yeah, sorry about that. After drinking freaking liter water and three cups of coffee, it caught up with me. I'm unmuted, right? Looks like I'm unmuted. Okay, good. Um, yeah, uh, if I bring an unlocked phone, then can I get a Philippines phone number? Yes, that's it, exactly what I did, Philip, is I had an unlocked iPhone um, and uh, got it set up really easy. I like Globe. Um, Globe works smart. Actually, I have two SIMs now. I use, uh, I've recently bought a smart SIM card for my iPad and I have Globe for my phone. Smart's got this really cool, like, like I'm unmuted, right? Okay, good. Um, Smart's got this really, I think it's called the Magic Data Plan where it never expires. And I really dig that and I use that for the iPad. And then, uh, but I use Globe for my uh, phone. Works well. I'm really, uh, have had no issues with Globe. And Globe's also to my home internet provider. So, yeah, I think it's, I pay around uh, 1,500 pesos. Hold on, let's convert that out. So 1,500, that's $26 for my phone. And my internet is right around the same. I spent $26 for my uh, home and internet. And my internet is, I think I have 100 meg down um, and like 20 or 25 or so up. And then my phone, I think I have a 20 gig data plan. So yeah, yep. But you could do exactly that. Just make sure it's unlocked. The signs have a particular way to speak Tagalog, which makes, uh, it's, yeah, it's not too funny for besides me. I'd rather speak English instead. Yeah, I think you're right, dude. There's some tension, and you know what I'm talking about. There's some tension between the North and the South. Uh, some of the speaks. Yep, yeah, that's right. That's right. There is some tension between the two cities, man. It's really, uh, or the two regions. And there's just a lot of pride, right? There's It's one of the things about the Philippines culture that there is. There's a lot of pride, and it's great, right? There's just a lot of pride with with their city, where they're from, who they are. And I think that's a lot of, a uh, lot of the culture, a lot of that, what's that play there? Yeah. That's a lot of tea. I know. <laughs> I drank. This is actually, um, uh, creatine and, uh, BCA, BCA. I can't remember what it is, but my, uh, I hired a personal trainer and, uh, he's got me taking some really cool supplements. This BCAA, I think it's called, dude, I've never taken that before. I've taken creatine on and off for many years, but this this stuff is just, it's really great in my workout. I, I feel great with it, man. I, I'm really a big fan of that. Uh, even in Bentangas, Tagalog is, is a source of fun for people in Manila. <laughs> fun making for people in Manila. Uh, in, in Bentangas, do you guys speak? You guys don't speak, you, you don't speak uh, Tagalog and, and Bantangas? Um, Ryan, I just had no time. I didn't even shoot videos. I had five days. I so, I'm such a bad vlogger. I had no, I should have stayed in hindsight a couple weeks. I just didn't have time. Yeah. I recommend not going in there for the next 25 to 35 minutes. No, just really quick. And I drank so much liquid, right? It's like clear, you know. I'm really, hydration is one of the things I really, after kind of having some, so I had some um, some positional vertigo. Uh, what, I can't even remember when I had it. Maybe over the summer, last year. Like, well, like United States summer, like July, August. And uh, one of the, as in my research of looking at it, could have been like dehydration. So since then, I've been really uh, focusing on my hydration. And uh, it wasn't that in nothing to do with hydration, just the crystals kind of got moved around in my inner ear. And, uh, you know, with some some physical therapy and some head movements, I was I can't remember the type of exercises that I had to do, but it actually fixed it. It was really it was one of my first um, and not my first uh, experience with the medical here, but a, really a positive good experience with the, the medical system here. I felt like I was properly diagnosed and properly treated pretty quickly. So I was that was really impressive. I have a WISE card. You can transfer funds from WISE to Gcash, but I don't think you can do cash pickup with Remitly and World Remit. You can't, you can't, yeah, yeah, right. You can't do, uh, yeah, Remitly or World Remit. Yeah, I know a lot of guys like WISE. I just got set with Remitly and I've been using that. I still need to look at opening up a Philippines bank account. I'm your age. Thanks for showing it can be done. Yeah, it's a little bit scary, Clark. I'm not going to lie. Uh, finishing up a few things and I'm moving to Indonesia. Yeah. 
it's a little bit spooky doing it this early, right? You got to make sure you got your money in order and it's close, but I couldn't, I couldn't wait anymore, man. I was just done. I couldn't do it. Yeah. I was just done, but yeah. Thanks, man. Hello. Hello, Adam. Jerry, first trip to Cebu next week. Yeah, Jerry. And I wish I'm going to be gone, brother. I'll be out. I won't be here, uh, but I'll let you guys know when I'm back in town. Check the community group for that kind of stuff. If you're, if you're already, uh, if you're already a member, if you're not, there's a link in the description. It is a private group. I am accepting pretty much everybody, but you know, no, you, you, it's not a good. You can't sell stuff, and you know, keep it, keep it generous, and and um, you know, it's a good time. But uh, I, I coordinate all my events and meetups through there, so um, keep an eye out there if you're if you're not already a member. I also took a free break and missed the answer. Bringing an unlocked phone. Yeah, yeah, man, you can bring an unlocked phone. Not a problem. That's what, I did the same thing, you know, and then. Uh, so I think so. There are some things regarding eSIMs versus SIM. I actually have physical SIM cards in my in my iPad and my iPhone. Actually, I bought an iPhone 15 Pro Max here, so it and it does have a SIM card in it. So I think if I think you could do an eSIM, I just I haven't worked with that at all. Um, but yeah, yeah. As long as your phone's unlocked, you should be good. Hey, Chris just joined from Bose Coffee, and yeah, nice man. I'm a fan of Bose Coffee. Andrew, do we know each other? Yeah, all right, man. Yeah, cool. Yeah, good for you, man. Hope all is good. Hope hope all is good there. Are you taking the five G five? Yes. Did you notice it? Yes. Yep. And the benefits you notice? Yeah, man. So I do about five grams. I think it is. It's one teaspoon. Um, I think that's around five grams. I I've been a fan of creatine for years. I I think it. It gives you that that workout where you can work out a little heavier and you don't fatigue as quick. But this stuff, man, I'm taking the BCA, I think it's called. That stuff is the bomb. That's like next level creatine. I really feel it in my muscles. I feel great. I don't. I definitely don't have muscle fatigue. And I think that the BCA is, is like three amino acids. Um, you know what? Hold on one second. I've got a wireless mic so I can talk and walk, but. It's it's three three amino acids in it. I'll grab it here. This stuff has been the bomb. It's uh, holy bifocals, Batman. Let's see what we got here. Uh, what's that? Leucine, isoluene, and val. I can't even. But this stuff, this BCA, a big fan of this. In the I mean, you can find it. I found it on bulk su supplements. And uh, actually, just got a new thing at Creatine too. So I, I actually really like this company, Bulk Supplements. I, you get them on Amazon. And I can't remember how much I paid, but this is a pound of Creatine. And I also ordered some of the BCA. But this stuff, man, this stuff has been really cool. Um, I guess what it does is it it hydrates your muscles. And I, I definitely feel a big I, like I can work out hard, and I don't have a lot of problems. And it, you know. It's definitely a male enhancer also, right? We've talked about that before. Definitely a male enhancer as well. So, and just overall, I think your cardiovascular, you're, you have less muscle fatigue. So like my running's better, you know, my dating activities are better, you know, just, you know, I'm a big fan of some supplements. And as we get older, man, we need all the help we can get, right? <laughs> Including the 45 minute heads up. Uh, Bentanga sent to Kalog with a special note. Okay, the Tongas is the Galag, but with a special note. Okay, all right. Andrew, I have to return to Cebu tonight. Wait for at least three weeks, then back to Leite. Okay, all right. All right, you coming back to Cebu tonight? Do we know each other, brother? Anyways, I'm in Cebu for, I think we're heading out Friday or so. So I'm in town for a little bit longer. Uh, focusing on weight loss, 6'1", 350. I feel like I could go... I would be too fat to go to the Philippines. It would be a huge treat to myself. Goals 220, 250, 400 was slow and steady. No worries, Adam. And you're not too fat for the Philippines, brother. It's one of the things I love about the people, the women, all of that is they're very accepting. They judge you more by who you are versus kind of what you look like. So you're not too fat for any of the women here, brother. You're not. You're not at all. And what you could do if you came here is you could work on that weight loss. You could hire, dude, I got a personal trainer. I've got a gym. My gym costs 2,000 pesos a month. Hold on, let me convert that out because I really don't think in dollars anymore. 
Um, so 2,000 pesos a month, so 35 bucks for a gym, which granted, that's not cheap compared to U.S. standards. But my trainer, I feel, was 30,000, was it? I think it was 30,000. So that's 540 U.S. dollars. But that 540 U.S. dollars is for like five months. Five months of a personal trainer, three days a week. That's so cheap. Like, what's the math on that, right? Like nothing, nothing. You know, and you can hire a nutritionist. I've got a nutritionist. I can get meals for 200 pesos a meal. What's that? 200 pesos a meal. Uh, 200 pesos, so four bucks a meal. So I got a nutritionist cooking me meals. I got a trainer taking care of me. I got a gym. You can do all that here. You don't have to wait, man. Matter of fact, you're probably better off doing it here versus there because you could afford the resources and, and be around people to help you. Yeah, but good for you, man. I hope that goes well. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you can come out now. Yeah, your hardest part is just flying over here, brother, right? Getting comfortable. But once you get here, I wouldn't I wouldn't worry about anything you're talking there. Once you get here, man, you'll be accepted by the people and you can put yourself in an environment where you can achieve those goals, right? We can. Yeah, good for you, man. Good luck with that. Hey, Chris, I've tried, I tried using Anytime Fitness in Bacola and was surprised at how expensive it is. Yes, the conditions were not great. Can you recommend a good gym in the Western besides John? You're right on, brother. As we're just kind of talking, they're not as good as what we're used to in the West. They're just not. Um, some of them are dimly lit. They're dark. They have old equipment. They're tiny. You know, no no air con. They're hot. Um, I personally have found Anytime Fitness to probably, to probably be the best. I liked it too, John, because I I have a membership here. I can go work out in the business park where I used to live. I was in I was in. Uh, Makati, I worked out at the Makati Anytime Fitness. When I was in Ilo Ilo, I worked out at Ilo Ilo Anytime Fitness. So it just kind of depends on where you're at. The, the Anytime Fitness here in IT Park is a brand new facility. It's nice, but it is small. Uh, the Makati one was just as nice. Um, the Ilo Ilo one was really nice. Uh, but the one in the business park that I used to go to, I mean, it was dark, dingy, and old and tiny. So it's really hit or miss. Unfortunately, there's no like planet fitness, like kind of what we're used to in the West. Where you freaking pay ten dollars a month for a huge modern state or art facility? I just I have not seen those around here at all in any of my in, in like traveling around. So unfortunately, it's kind of one of the things where um, it's a little bit better in the West. I love using Grab for cabs, food delivery, and groceries. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's great service. I'm a big fan of Grab. Yep. Why are you tripping? What's up, man? Hello. Esims are available, but not for prepaid plan. I knew there was something around that. Yeah, and I do a post-played plan, right? I play monthly for my service. Yeah, it's not, is that prepaid? Crap, I don't know, brother. But yeah, I know there is there is some nuance around that. I want to move this camera down a little bit. Uh, yes, taco. Skiing has been epic, but almost over. I'm sorry, man. How far am I behind? 10 o'clock, 10.03? Okay, good. Skiing has been almost over. Gonna be tough to get through November. And yeah, looking forward to Cebu. Hanging out like my dears. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. This is fun. I was just enjoying it. Like I said a bunch of times now, this wasn't anything I was expecting, this type of deal, right? With the guys and hanging out, just the community. And the women too. I made some great, you know, great friends. Tin over in 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 Manila and Jenny here, you know, just making great female friends as well. So yeah, I'm excited for you, man. Excited. Hope hope it's going well uh we've never met okay just popped in your channel once every few months yeah no worries andrew yep yep no worries brother yeah do you take vitamin or minerals i haven't taken any other supplements i actually know i take these every now and then so it's, it's a probiotic i think during during the pandemic i kind of got uh turned on to gut health and um you know trying to get as help, gut health as possible just as a as a way to help with immunity and stuff like that. And so that's about, I think the only other thing that I take now, Americans that are discovering what the dream is. Yep. This nation is for expats. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it is true, man. It is true. What was somebody saying to the, in my, one of my videos, the new American dream is leaving, right? It's unfortunate, but you know, I, 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 I had to get away from the toxic culture. I really did. Just the, the hate culture. I just, it's it's you know no chance in it getting better really gave up on cebu gyms uh burpees at home all right yeah cool yeah duma you can get 
one, the boxing coach. Yeah, 160 pesos an hour. Absolutely. Yep. Boxing coaches, Muay Thai. There's a lot of that stuff. I got a buddy of mine, Ricky. Shout out to you, brother. Um, you know, doing doing some Muay Thai stuff. Um, you don't need a gym here. Yep. Run the beach and swim. Yeah. Or date, right? <laughs> uh, heard that. Or that AI will really take a toll on workforce in two to three years. Any thoughts on property values at that time? Yeah, I don't. I see, in, in particular, the Cebu region, I think property values should be going down. I mean, just, I base that just based on freaking how much construction is going on. There's so much building, so many properties are going up. I would think it's got to go down um, based on that. I don't, I don't, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, great question. Any green spaces in the city for running? There's no way I'm jogging along the roadside with the exhaust fumes. Yes, a little bit hard to find, honestly. The one area is the Cebu Business Park. I ran in that area. You're a little bit in the street, but not bad. Um, thankfully, now I've got a running area kind of behind my building. I do have to do like three or four laps kind of deal, but you can get out and do some side streets. You might have to drive a little bit. Then you can get out into El Corso, and I see people running there. Uh, but some of that is just picking the right neighborhood. Cebu Business Park and, and around there with some good running. Um, but yeah, yeah, some of that's just picking the right area. But you're right. Some of these streets I would not want to be running on, just congested, traffic, dangerous to even walk on, let alone run. Yeah, Filipinos aren't in a gym, not like in the U.S., right? Exactly. And it's interesting, right? So in some ways it can be, you know, not a good thing to have a, like a super built body, right? You want to kind of maybe hide that a little bit. I think modesty in general goes a long way here in this country. Um, so being more modest is is a better way to be. Um, yeah, absolutely. Makani and BGC in Manila has the most modern, yep, and including gyms. Absolutely. It, it's so true, man. Yeah. The Anytime Fitness, though, here in the IT park, though, it was on par with the one in Makani. Yeah, really on par. There's a higher end gym chain in Metro Manila called Surge Fitness. They have a gym, Glorieta, Makati, a bit over 50 a month Western standards. Yeah, they're they're more expensive, right? Anytime fitness guys. I, I was a member of that when I was in the States, freaking 10 bucks a month. I actually did the 20 month a month, $20 a month for some of the more premier services, but you ain't gonna find that here. You know, you, you'll 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 find some nice gyms, but like these guys are saying, they're they're fifty dollars or so. So unfortunate is one of the things. Yeah, I'd be more worried about tripping over a dog than the exhaust fumes. It's so true. I'm getting freaking run over, man. Freaking by a jeepney. <laughs> but you're right, dog. I'm actually, I'm kind of a little bit nervous and excited at the same time about running in the province and uh, what that's going to be like. I think I'm going to try to get the drone up and kind of follow it. First of all, guys, I don't run very fast. You know, I think I'm running whatever. Freaking 12 minute miles or whatever, maybe even not even that. It's I can walk faster, but I, hey, I'm out there doing it. I'm trying. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to try to run in the province. That'll be fun, right? I could see getting chased by dogs or whatever, or by roosters. <laughs> That'd be a good video. <laughs> uh, getting chased by a rooster down the street. I mean, we're, yeah, yeah. Uh, better to work out at home. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think since the pandemic, too, a lot of people have moved that. My plan is to bring down, uh, I've got some, uh, I used to have a Peloton, so I've got some exercise bands from the Peloton that I had, and uh, my plan is to uh, bring those with me so I can do some stuff while I'm on the road. Yeah. I uh, would love to swim, but with, uh, with Gino Kamasta, I refuse. I appreciate the words of advice. It seems like. What the heck is that, man? Can I even copy and paste that? Hold on. I got to look that up, brother. I have no idea what that is. Let's look. G-Y-N-E-C-O-M-A-S-T-I-A. -E is an overdevelopment or enlargement of the breast tissue in men or boys. That's become long. I have, dude, I've never even heard of that. I don't think it's a problem with swimming. I think uh, the swim... When I look at the swimmer body, right, it's mostly a shoulder and back that kind of stands out. I haven't really seen a lot of chest. Huh. I, I'm not, dude, I'm obviously I've never even heard of that term. And I'm not a medically trained professional by no means. Uh, but I, 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 I'm, I have no idea. Interesting. 
Yeah, no, no clue on that one, brother. I have common sense, but <laughs> no, no formal medical training. Maybe even that, not a lot of common sense. Oh, I should have been able to do something in Gotti. <laughs> uh, do you take electrolytes when you go on longer rides in the heat? Uh, yeah, I'll drink. I, I kind of try to stay away from the Gatorade and that kind of stuff just because I feel it's not super healthy in water. But, yeah, if I feel like um, I'm out and about, I maybe grab one, you know. I also am big, so here's something you may want to bring is a camel pack. I do like the camel pack and I bring, you know, it's a three liter pack you can put on you. And if you see in some of my, like my longer videos and my riding videos, I'll have that kind of on. But yeah, for hydration, that's the best thing. I just pretty much drink water. Uh, yeah. I've seen that. Yes, man. I've seen you at the Firefly Roost type restaurant. That's one of my favorite hotels to stay at when I'm in Manila. I had talked to you in January when I was trying to come to Cebu, but too busy in January. I'm sorry, Chris. Yeah, sorry if we. Oh, if you were busy or I was busy, or either way, sorry we weren't able to connect. Um, but yeah, Firefly Rooftop Restaurant, and th those are everywhere. Matter of fact, the uh, the thumbnail uh, I think was from that rooftop restaurant. The thumbnail for this video, freaking gorgeous, man. That's some really good night shots. I'm really impressed with that iPhone. iPhone, dude, this iPhone 15 Pro camera is. The night shots on here are incredible, man. Amazing. Uh, up up here in Luzon, I I uh, have a huge green yeah call. Have the huge green area called Nova. Oh yeah, nice man. Oh nice. All right, cool. Yeah, you got a good good area to get out and do uh, some running or some exercise. Is it safe to ride bicycles around Cebu? Or I I wouldn't ride bicycles here. People do it. There is a bike community here. To me, there's just too much traffic. Uh, yeah, I would avoid bicycles in the city. Honestly, I don't ride my motorcycle in the city either. Uh, but there are people who do it. There's people who ride up the Trans Central Highway. I just think there's probably better roads to be on. I think if you're really into wanting to be a, a cyclist, I think Bohol. I think Bohol would be a really, really, really good option. Um, you could be near, what's it called? You know what? Let's pull out the map. Let's pull out the map. Add to stage. Where's the map? Let's go to Bohol. So major city, Taklabaran, you could be near this city. But you've got all kinds of mountains all through here and not a lot of busy roads. So you could you could kind of pick near near this city, be on the outskirts or be in the city, whatever. You've got a great island here, Pangalao, for some touristy stuff. Uh, Bohol looks great, gentlemen. It really does. And if yeah, and if you're in a cyclist and want to ride around, I think that would be a better option than than, than Cebu City. Yep. Uh, let's remove that. Yeah, well, Chris, damn good channel. Yeah, Prince, no worries, brother. Thank you. No, thank you. Learned so much in two hours in the last three or four months. We'll be in Cebu the 2nd of April. Keep up the good work. We need new new channels like yours. Thank you, man. No, Prince, I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, I'm learning as I go. I'm no expert in anything in life. I'm not even an expert about this guy. <laughs> but, you know, I, I like sharing. Like, I was an IT professional for 20 years, I was, uh, worked in a major law firm, and my expertise was helping attorneys and helping paralegals and staff, whatever, in the arena of technology and, and, and language in it and saying it in a way that was unintimidating and, and was helpful for them. And that's kind of what I'm doing with this channel is I'm sharing my experiences with what's going on in a way that's non intimidating, that's helpful. Um, so, you know, but I uh, appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, one of the best views. It's one of the best views in Manila of the city. Ah, it was gorgeous up there, man. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Right? Loved it. Yeah, big fan of of that area. I so I could see living there for a good month, and that was kind of my plan. You know, maybe if my lease expires here in October, maybe it's November or December or whatever, go spend a month in Makati. I mean, who knows, right? So far away, and there's so much going on. My life could be really different by then. I never assume it will be. So many places to see, gentlemen. I mean, we could spend multiple lifetimes just traveling around here. And we do. A lot of us just go around and look at trying to find the best spot. I thought of moving to Depolo. Yeah. Yeah, just run it. Yes, I agree, Andrew. Let's, you know what? Let's pull up the map. Let's look at Depolo because that looks great, too. I'm with you. When Scotty Boy was out there live streaming, I was like, man, what a running area that would be, right? I'm in the right area, aren't I? There's Dapitan. I think the Polo's right here, right? Yeah, here we are. So this 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 walkway right here, 
look say oh cool so there's an airport there all right yeah i agree man the Pollock city looks great and it's easy you can get there really easy there's a ferry from dumaguete down cebu city might even really have a ferry but the problem is is you're you're now in a region of mindanao that you don't want to really be in right you just don't you know and it's that's what's unfortunate about that you know and i i, I want to be I want to be in a region of the Philippines that I can explore. I want to be in an area where I can get out and ride and do things, right? Like Cebu, this island of Cebu, we have zero issues, man. We can go anywhere and everywhere and not an issue. You, you can't say that about Mindanao, right? There, there are issues, there are areas there that we just want to stay out of, especially there's more stuff going on, right? With whatever. It's just, I, you know, it's just, it, it's unfortunate because I feel that there's, there's a lot of regions. But, but as my friend, shout out to you, Jen um she is telling me she's christy there's even regions in bohol you got to be careful she goes you really want to look at any remote mountain region is where rebels can typically hide out so is it is it just mindanao no but it there that's where the majority of it is but there can be some regions all throughout the philippines that we just we do want to be careful in so anyways yeah yeah but the polo running running along the, the, the that uh that boulevard there does look great yeah, I think so. I, I, I've even seen a lot of bicycles. Yeah, it's just there's so much traffic, man. You know, I feel like you become the potato masher <laughs> when you're... I, I wouldn't want to ride a, a cycle in this type of traffic. I don't ride my motorcycle, right? But I see people riding. It's just, it's a little spooky to me. With a fitness trainer there, be able to help with you starting out lazy as hell with a broken body. Yes, man. You can, you can hire someone to help you with no matter what stage you're at in your life. Sure, absolutely. And that, I think that is one of the things, Chris, that most of us don't really realize. You have access to maids, chefs, nutritionists, personal trainers. All these things are super affordable. 24-hour healthcare, right? So I know a guy who has, he's taking care of his elderly mother. And they, what they do is they have two maids that come in. And they have a maid that comes in during the day and then a maid that comes in at night. And they have 20, someone 24-7 watching, right? And, and you're, you're talking what? Maybe 15,000 pesos? Hold on. 115,000, 1, 2, 3. You know, $300 a month for that type of care? $300 a month. So you're talking about services here that are so affordable and easy for us to get to, right? So yes, you can... You can have someone help you with your body. I'm decided to either stay long term in Cebu or Davao. Well, check it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I would, Billy, I would check out both because you're right. They both are great. And I was in the same boat. I'm still in the same boat. I, I would come to Cebu. Well, I don't know, man. I, I don't think you can go wrong with either one. You can't go wrong with either one. Pick one, flip a coin. <laughs> I like Cebu in the fact that. It gives me access to a broader range of the Philippines, but that's me because I want to travel around a little bit. If that's, if that, sorry, I was hearing something. If that's not you and you're like, you know what? I want a city traveling around the area. Isn't really a big deal for me. Then Davo city, right? So I, you can't go wrong with either one though. You really can't. There are some nuances and differences I feel though in the cities, but you know, I would just get here and then use the time to kind of travel around a little bit. Yeah, earthquakes are in Davao City, they are, but you can have them here. You can also have typhoons. I mean, look, as far as natural disasters go, I thought I read beforehand moving out here that there's no other place in the world that has more natural disasters than this region here. Earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, typhoons, right? They're, they're just here. Um, now, Davao in particular seems to have a little more earthquakes recently, yeah, but I think they have them here too. Um, you know, does, does Luzon and... and and Lete and Samar have more typhoons than the rest of the region. Yeah, but you know they had one here too, right? So I think no matter where you go, you're going to have a little bit of natural disasters. Um, but it, like everything, it's just about having a plan, right? Like for me, so if a, if if a typhoon started to come through, I'm heading I'm heading to Davao. I'm heading south, right? So um, it's just having a plan around um, what you want to do in those in those types of instances, and I think you'll be fine. As ma Gino, yeah, man boobs. If you take steroids, it can be a side effect. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 How long did you suffer from positional vertigo before you recovered from it, Chris? So 
I had, I want to say once they started doing those, and I can't remember, there's a test, there's an actual name for the procedure that they did. I think it's a German name. But once they, I went in there and they did a procedure where they, you know, I had my head tilted at a certain angle and then moved it quick and then did that kind of, right? I did, once I did that procedure, I think it was gone within weeks. Um, and then I had it for maybe, maybe three months or so. And then finally I was like, this isn't right. And how, what, how it would occur for me is if I laid on my back, the room would start to spin. Um, but if I laid on my side, I was okay. Um, if I stood up really quick, the room would spin. So it was, and if I turned my, if I looked up at the ceiling, the room would start to spin. It's so scary, right? And if you Google that kind of crap, you're like, you know, you're going to die. <laughs> but yeah, so that was kind of my deal. And, uh, but it was once I, once I got into that, that balance, it was a balancing center and they did those exercises within probably two to three weeks things kind of settled down to my ears. And then I, I have not had any issues with, with vertigo sense. So yeah, great question. Where some block, yeah, where some blocking swim shirt, Adam. Yeah. Sun protection's big, right? Long sleeve hat, neck stuff, you know, big, big deal. Yeah. Smoobs. <laughs> where am I at time? All right. I'm 10 minutes, 10 minutes out. If you have a gyno, just wear shirt designed for swimming, even a regular shirt, a lot of Filipino. Yeah, yeah, long sleeve stuff, sun protection. I actually have UV, UV protected long sleeve shirts um, that I wear. Did I miss over someone's thing about sun? Yeah, anyways. Yeah, long sleeve stuff. I, I prefer coverage, like clothing coverage versus putting crap on my skin. Um, that's just me. Uh, but I prefer just kind of covering up. Like when I'm riding, I got long, uh, long pants on. I got heat gear, both, both hat, uh, shirt, and pants when I'm out in the sun all day. Synalog, I was out in the sun for like 13, 14 hours, whatever. I didn't get burnt at all. Never put any sunscreen on. Um, but I just, you know, I'm covered. Yeah. I get that comment. Uh, yeah. Okay, Billy was vlogging in Thailand. Had to grow subs, hence I considered checking out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. A lot of vloggers come here to grow their channel. They just you gotta worry though, right? Like what happens when you leave? You know, Jonathan, I'm sure, is going through that right now, travel escapes. So and a lot of guys do. So you just gotta be careful of that. I wouldn't worry so much about I don't know, it's hard. I get it, man. I understand the world of it. Trust me, I get it. Yeah, how bad is the traffic in Naval? Uh, I thought about moving there, but the roads, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some traffic. But here's the thing about it, too. So I was in Manila. I got in Thursday night at 10 o'clock. I had a cab, a grab from Manila Airport down to Alabang, which is whatever. Here we go. Add the stage. Uh, so I was in Manila. I took a cab down from the airport directions down to... Ala, Alabang. So I took a cab down there. Yeah, it says an hour and seven minutes, right? It took me, I'd say about 30 minutes when I got in at 10 at night. This is a Thursday night. And then, so it. What my point is, is that the traffic, guys, the traffic is really dependent on the time of day. Um, it is. And then on Sunday, when I went back to the airport, because it's Sunday, no one's on the road. Everyone's home. So... I think if, I think people make a, and I'm not saying it's not bad, but I'm saying people make a bigger deal about of it than I think it is, and you can avoid it, right? Like you can avoid it, avoid rush hours, avoid you know travel on Sundays, travel late at night, um, and not all the time, but uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but you're an expert on your own opinion, Chris. That's right, Thomas. That's right. I just you know just we have to remind ourselves that it's that right that it's a uh, it's subjective like it's you know. Gosh, one of the one of the most incredible things I've learned about life is that like 99% of things are just made up. It's all made up. And for me, just knowing that makes life just so much easier and laughable. And, you know, just even the hard stuff, right? It's just, it's made up. It's all made up, you know? <laughs> uh, that's where you would have seen the me and Scotty Boy's live streams. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
All right. All right. Cool. Uh, are there absolute no go areas for Americans, non Filipinos? I hear. Yeah. Yeah. So absolute no go areas. Yes, there are. And I think you could look this up on whatever, like state sites or, or tour stuff. Uh, I don't have that information, but yeah, if you'd go like, uh, yeah, United States immigration and look, look up the no travel zones. Somebody, somebody probably has a map here, but really this section of, uh, of Mindanao is probably wise for us to avoid. And it, and it's basically, what are we talking about here? West of general Santos, all the way kind of through here, uh, especially through this region. These are, these are areas that we're told not to go to now. Uh, I know Gio talks about his time in Zamonga. I know my uh, shout out to you, Lynn. Um, she lives in Zamonga. I know people who live here and she's like, ah, you could come, you know, you come hang out, but you know, wouldn't, you know, you'd want to be with me kind of deal and, and, and hang out with people that you know. Uh, but yeah, but in general, uh, Western, yeah, Western Mindanao is a region we want to avoid. Uh, just because, look, I mean, there's so many other places we can go to. I mean, we're talking about the Philippines, right? And all of this is, is good. There's like this section that's not. So there's a lot of where we want to go, where we can go. And, you know, as I was talking about mountain regions and things like that, I just, you want to be mindful anytime, anytime. You want to be mindful when you're in the city. You want to be mindful when you're in the remote areas. You know, you just want to be, yeah, want to have your head on. And I think most Westerners, it's so much more dangerous for us where we live that as long as we keep that mentality with us, we're just going to be just fine. You know, you don't want to stand out, though. You want to be, you know, you know, just keep that Western mindset. Keep that that safety because we're trained. I mean, we, we've got we've got gun violence. We've got people running each over over and freaking parades and stuff. Right. It's just crazy what we what we kind of tolerate now in the West. Um, so it's not like that here and you keep your head on you, um, and, and bring a little bit of that caution mindset. You'll be, you'll be just fine. I feel I did meet Steve. Yes. Yes. That was really the reason why I went out. So, um, is to meet up with that community group. I heard so, heard so much about it and, um, I reached out to one of the guys. Um, I don't know if I could say your name. That's why I'm not really saying your name. So, but I read, cause I know he's on here. I reached out to one of the guys and uh, he was, I said, look, next time one comes up, let me know and I'll fly out and give me, just give me advance notice. So that's what happened is he gave me advance notice. I booked my, my plane that day and uh, spent whatever five nights out there. But that was the main reason to go is to get connected with that community out there. So great. Yeah. Really, really glad I went out there. Big, big group. It was like 50 people at that launch at uh, Texas Roadhouse. So, and they actually had a guy from uh, the American embassy out there. Um, handing out flyers and talking about stuff. One of the topics that I heard him talk about was how to get your wife um, over to the United States and that kind of deal and, and, and tips and tricks around that. I'm done with Cebu, the small provinces, towns of, yes, great point. Yeah. And I think I'm going to be right with you, Andrew. I think I'm right with you. And it's part of my video too about dating. Look, if, 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 if you sit there and you look and in your view, you see more than five foreigners, you are not in a good place to meet a Filipina. <laughs> I mean, really, you're not. You know, it's just, if you, you, yeah, it's not a good place. Either one, you're going to meet professionals, or two, you're going to meet gold diggers or monkey branchers or all that other crazy crap, right? Um, so, yeah, 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 I'm with you, man. The smaller towns, in, in, in the world, in the realm of dating, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Yep. Well, that was answered early. <laughs> don't worry. I don't remember Adam what you asked, but I'm a little bit behind on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The no, the no, uh, no go areas. Okay. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. See, there, there is a website, dude. I can't remember. There's a state department or one. There's a more official site that you should probably go look. Um, you should be able to Google it and find out though. Um, but there are, you know, there's like whatever United States immigration um, sites that they, they, they post more accurate and give scales as far as areas. I know people that I think that work for the United States military. They have to get special clearance before they can go anywhere in Mindanao. So uh, but 
I would advise to you to, uh, you can check the United States tourism or travel and get the, the full details on where you should and shouldn't travel in the Philippines. I, I think it's an exaggeration to say no, can't travel anywhere in Mindanao. I think that's definitely an exaggeration, but I do think there's areas that we should just flat out avoid. And it's that, that Western region of stuff. Could you maybe go there? I don't know, man. I'm just, there's so many other places to go. Why risk it is kind of my motto on that. Um, I am going to be traveling around Mindanao and, and, uh, you know, Davao and, and General Santos area, but General Santos will be the furthest West I'll, I'll go. Yeah. Seems like a, seems like a lot of younger expats retired to the Philippines, meet young women, have two kids and then head back to the U.S. to get a better family. Um, how to avoid such a situation? Move to Makati. <laughs> That's how I would avoid that. Do the last thing you'd want to do. And it, I, I think, I know other people have talked about this on the flip side of this, but look, we adapt to our culture. I, I'm adapting to the Philippines. You know, you take a Filipino over there, she's going to adapt to that culture. And the last thing you want to do is ruin a perfectly good human being. I mean, I, I just wouldn't do it. I, if you need to move to a more modern um, part of the world, and stay in the Philippines, go to BGC, go to Makani, um, go to those areas, or, or go to Thailand, go to Vietnam. You know, I don't know. That's my take on it. Um, it's just so different. I, and I feel that they were just going to struggle, man. They're going to get exposed to that hate, and it's just going to be its something that they're not even used to. Um, so different. Very, very naive and sweet culture. Um, yeah, yeah. Great question, though, man. Yep. Most Filipinos are more into a good person. Yes, exactly, right? Which is awesome. That's what we want. We want we want to date and marry women who are more into the character of who we are, not our freaking wallet, right? Now, it is a factor. It is it hypergamy, right? Is that what's called? Marry up, whatever. It still exists. It's still here. But just by being here, we are freaking Steve Jobs. You know, just by being here, we're that. You know, we are that 1%, right? I, I, you're crazy if you think it, it it doesn't exist kind of in the level, but it's just so obtainable for us that um, it's not even really kind of an issue. I mean, you still want to be mindful, right, of your finances and and not talk about that kind of deal openly for, for a, a good portion. Learn how to pick out a good one. Dude, I had a date recently with a Filipina. Blew me away. Like, this is what we kind of hear about. She shows up to the house, and the first thing she starts doing is cleaning. I'm like, you, you don't have to. Just sit down and relax. So let's watch a movie, right? And no, she's like, I got to clean. I gotta, and so we're, we spend half hour freaking cleaning the house. <laughs> I'm like, all right, great, you know? Because I can't sit there and watch her clean. I like, feel like a complete ass at, right? I'm a, you know, a, a whatever, right? I've been single most of my life, but still, I, anyway, so we're cleaning the house for a half hour. So, but yeah, just really great. I'm just, I'm blown away by uh, how, how it is here. Why are people in the Philippines obsessed with Koreans? They act like they're better than everyone else. Yeah, there is a little bit of that, isn't there? You know, I, they are, but they aren't. It's really an interesting dynamic that you're pointing to because um, my understanding, again, this is just my opinion and, 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 and that is that they, the Koreans do look down upon the Filipinos. I don't know, like I'm not Korean. I, I don't have any kind of backstory, but that's kind of what I hear about it. Um, I, I do notice that Koreans in general have a tendency to associate with themselves, right? They, they, they travel, it's kind of like deer. You never just see one. They travel in groups. Uh, but I don't know. Like, I have not had any bad encounters with really anybody of any race, of any nationality since I've been here. Um, but I, I, I understand what you're talking about. Um, and there's, there, I think there is a little bit of that love-hate kind of relationship with that. Like, they, yeah. Yeah, great, great, interesting uh, uh, topic there. Yeah, man, good to see you, brother. Thank you, really. Thank you. I appreciate who you are. Thank you. Uh, late to the live again. Hey, no worries, Jack. I'll be in Cebu for about a week in mid-April. Hope to catch up. Yeah, man. Yeah, I should be back around then. We'll see. If anything, I'll be back for a little bit. I really don't know what my schedule is going to be like over the past couple months or so. So I really don't know. Yes, don't forget the volcanoes, right? Yeah, volcanoes, earthquakes. Yep. That's one of the reasons why I don't freaking live out there in, 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 in south of Manila is that freaking vol active volcano that's right there. Oh, that's a good point. Yes, exactly. That maneuver. 
Yep. That's the fix vertigo. Yep. Yep. And it worked. It absolutely worked. And you could YouTube, you could you YouTube that maneuver and you'll get, you know, the information you can see on that. Yep. Had for, for, for positional vertigo too. Doctor told me to yep. 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 Yeah. It took it for me, it wasn't like overnight but I'm pretty sure it was within a week or two. I was completely, and they, they explained it, right? You got like three kind of canals in your ear and there's crystals in there in each one of those and, and that controls your balance. And sometimes those crystals can get out of whack. So what those maneuvers do is they reposition those crystals for you by, uh, by doing those movements and kind of kind of working around a little bit to get everything where it needs to be. It worked for me too, yeah, yep, yeah. Have I been to Bintan Island yet? Yes, I've been to Bintan Island, I think, what, three times now? Got several videos on it. It's probably the best beaches that I've seen out there by Koto Resort. Love that place. I actually just met the general manager a couple weeks ago out there, too. I know a lot of the, uh, I have some, some friends that are out there. Love it. The only thing I don't like about it from a motorcycling standpoint is it's really flat. So it's kind of a boring island to ride around. Um, but as far as the beach island, unbelievable, unbelievable, yeah, yeah, vasectomy, <laughs> yeah, it's something to think about, though, gentlemen, it's something to think about, because here's why, I got mine done right after my divorce, and I was 50, whatever, maybe 50 years old, and I was like, yeah, you know what, I'm done, you know, I, if I would have thought that I would be in a position where I'd be with a 20 year old wife, I would rethink it. I kind of wish I didn't get it right. I love kids. I absolutely love kids and starting a family here. That would be incredible. And it's very much possible in the States. It's not, I don't know. Right. It's just, it's something you want to think about. It's something you really, really, really want to think about. When I got it done, I had no thought about being in the Philippines dating, you know, women who were wanting in, in an age range with kids. I just didn't even cross my mind, right? So something to think about. I'm off to get some sleep. Yes, we'll be on just for a little. I'm actually going to get through the comments on that. Uh, we'll sign off here too. Yeah, I'm off to get some sleep other yeah, while sleeping. The local.
Setting. All right, I think it's back. My bad, guys. My microphone died. The battery died. You hear me? Yeah, it's dead. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, with that, let me scroll down. Yeah, let me make sure I'm good here. Settings, audio. Yeah, it looks like the Mac broke. I got the microphone on. Sorry about that, guys. I, I apologize. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, man. I apologize. Yeah, lip free. Yeah, I don't have a... Yeah, sorry, guys. I appreciate it. Adam, thank you, brother. Thank you. Sound cut off a sec to me. <laughs> Can you guys hear me or no? Yeah, back. All right. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, guys. My microphone died. So I killed the battery on it. Sorry about that. I probably was chatting for quite a while. Thank you, Adam. I appreciate it. Close caption. Check the mute button here. Uh, so 1040. Yeah, about five minutes or so. Okay. Sorry about that, gentlemen. I think with that, though, I bought an Insta360. Um, the sound died when I asked about my red pill question. So red pill question and uh, Lex. Let's scroll up, Lex. I did talk a little bit about that. Oh, that's too bad. Is that really that far up? No way. Name one red pill. God, did it really die there? Name one red pill talking point that doesn't work in the Philippines. Did it die there? That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So one red pill. I just, I, oh, that sucks. I feel like I had a really good explanation there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's different here. Like there, there is, I, I, I've met modern Filipinos who are, who are in, who are, like they're into empowered women, but they, but they still need a man, right? Like they want a man, they need a man. So I, I think that that is, is, um, is one of the big differences here. Um, but I feel like as most of us get here, like go your own way, red pill. I think most of us start to see that and realize that. And, or, or we start to realize that the women here are just different that, that we can, if we want a real traditional, loving relationship a marriage we can have that here um easily 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 it's just, just so much it's different in that regard right that's, i think that's what i said around that yeah sorry guys my bad hey i think i'm gonna uh log off almost three hours it's fun though i do dig it i, I love the lives i love um <laughs> the silence will cost you another hour alive uh, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, it died, and I didn't see it. So, um, appreciate you calling me. So, um, but yeah, I'm gonna end it here, gentlemen. We'll see you guys on the next one. A lot coming up. I'll try to figure out a way to do lives from the road, but uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care. <laughs>